All right, we're good. It's episode three of the Uneducated Podcast, or Uneducated Education Podcast. I don't even know the name of my shit. I'm so uneducated. <laughs> uh, this week, I have a special guest. Chase cannot make it, but instead of Chase, we have TJ Palomo. Spot on pronunciation. I appreciate that to the utmost. It's like we've known each other for like three years or something, right? Yeah, weird, right? <laughs> it's too long. It's too long. It, yeah, <laughs> especially where we're at. Um, how you doing, man? Oh, you know, I'm just living the dream over here. You know, <laughs> just happy to be here. How was work today for you? Uh, that would be unproductive. Unproductive. Uh oh. Well, <laughs> hopefully your boss isn't listening here. Yeah, I think he knows exactly how I do things. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, just for those who don't know, give me a little bit of your background, TJ. Sweet. So I am a dad of two interesting daughters. And um, I'm actually originally from just south of San Francisco, from Mountain View, California. Moved to Arizona, became a teacher, realized that doesn't pay anything <laughs> and then ended up you know hop skipping and jumping through a couple different careers before i ended up where i am now so which will keep nameless exactly the people who know us know mm -hmm. okay um so you were a teacher what what did you teach um i taught high school english specifically 10th and 11th grade do you speak english well i would say that's questionable <laughs> in terms of how you would define what the english language is Oh, I love it. I knew I wasn't going to get just the, yeah, I do. <laughs> like, no, that's, there's so much slang, you know, it is what it is. Which is great. So this morning uh, when I saw you at work and I made sure that we're still on for today, you had an interesting subject that you asked me about. And I was like, this is a little loud. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize that I like my volume control that early in the morning is basically non-existent. Everything is either super loud or I'm whispering to myself and sounding like a sociopath. So it's right. totally fine. But either way. It was it was a good topic, and we can definitely talk about it. We definitely didn't talk about it this morning. Cause no, like, no, because it is definitely not work appropriate. <laughs> you're gonna get me fired. Yeah, I'm like I am clearly angry about this, and I should talk a little not so loud. Right. So um, the topic was uh, if a female teacher sleeps with a male student, she gets a little slap on the wrist. Mm -hmm. As, well, I wouldn't even say so before we even go that route. Mm -hmm. So it's more of. The term pedophile being used when only in scenarios where the teacher is male and the student is female or, or male in that situation, the, the teacher is a pedophile. But when it's a female, the terminology is she had sex with a student and not referred to as a pedophile. She's not a child molester. Exactly. Mm. Which is, you know... You want to talk gender equality, but, um, <laughs> but, but it just, it's, it's an odd concept because I like, it didn't, I, it didn't even occur to me until like two days ago. Cause there's an, a new story out, um, about a South Carolina teacher who slept with a 13 year old student and used a, a secondary student as a lookout. Um, cause she was having sex with him in the classroom, which blew she, my mind. She had, so one kid was fucking. Yeah. And another, his homie was at the door watching for Principal Steve. Exactly. <laughs> Waiting for him to come down the hallway. Where was this at? Uh, it's, I think, I'm pretty positive it's South Carolina is where the, where oh. the school's at. I mean, but cousins fuck each other there. <laughs> so you're like, uh, it's got South in the name. It doesn't have a whole lot going on for it. But it, it was, it was just odd because I read the article and then I, I noticed that they didn't use the term pedophile. So I, I went and searched it in mm -hmm. a couple different avenues and I was like, She's never called a pedophile. And that's clearly what she is. Like, she molested a child. But because it's a man, or because it's a, well, it, because it's a boy, she, she, she's not referred to in that fashion. So Right, right. I follow what you're saying. Now, I believe there's an Adam Sandler movie where this takes place as well. Oh, really? You've never seen it? Mm -hmm. um, it's got Andy Samberg in it. So Andy Samberg was born from the teacher fucking like the dad is Adam yeah, Sandler yeah. at 13 mm -hmm. yes yes and she was in jail for fucking him but she doesn't she get like released during the movie or something like that mm, I don't think so but she was in jail and I I think and I'm not a, I'm, I'm uneducated <laughs> but I think there's been cases where teachers do go to jail now they may not get labeled a pedophile but they still do get punished do you have a problem yeah. with that or do you no, want no. you just want the label i just think it's uh, just an interesting social dynamic because right. it's like as soon as that happens with a male teacher he is automatically a pedophile like that's what happens like right. 
he didn't just have sex with a student. Like he he is a pedophile. He was he was smacking that little kid exactly. out. Yeah. And so, but it's it's just interesting because I, they still both genders end up becoming on this like on the sex offender list. Like that's that's they have to register. Like in both situations they do. That, okay. that I've seen, they both I I didn't see a discrepancy in terms of punishment. Okay. Like that, so that's totally fine. It was just more of like. Why didn't we use the word with women? Why is that not a thing? Like that that's it's the same term. It's a person who has it's sex. It's not defined with. by sex. No, it's okay. it is as far as I I know, but clearly equally not in, educated in the <laughs> pedagogical <laughs> pedological piece of being a pedophile. So, I I just, I just found it to be odd. Like it was just one of those things that stood out to me cuz you would assume. Yeah. And I mean Yeah, it's pedophile pedophilia is definitely not Defined by sex, but if you think of any pedophile, notable pedophile, you think only man. Yeah, no, that was like the first thing that popped in my head. I'm like, I don't understand why that's a thing, and that doesn't make sense to me, but, you know, like, we we have plenty of societal norms that don't make sense, so that's, I've, I'm like, all right, fine, but yeah. I'm like, this is kind of messed up, because it's like, oh, she had sex with a, a student. I'm like, no, she, she molested a child. Like, that's what she did. Right, and I mean, um... That's really, that's odd. Well, this is odd that we bring it up because I just, um, I just finished my intro to psychology class. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which I fucking hated, but <laughs> um, I chose a bias in the workplace. Oh, okay. Because I face that. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. People calling me somebody else all the time. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, anyway, um, one of the things in there that, that's, um, there was a big section on uh, bias towards women. And it said even like women managers, when you think of a role, if you're hiring another manager, they automatically assume male, which would be the same with pedophilia. Yeah. That's, and it's weird. Th there's <laughs> a lot of weird like gender norms when it comes to that kind of thing. And like, it's not even appropriate to call them gender norms. But like when I was becoming a teacher, mm -hmm. um, they tried to push me really hard to go into the younger grades, like K through six. And now who's they? You say they pushed uh, you. It other uh, like my t my mentors and my teachers and stuff like that they okay. really wanted to get more men in the classroom at that age level because it is very female dominated right yeah i don't like if you think yeah, about, yeah. you think the breakdown of your teachers over grade levels mm -hmm. the older you get mm -hmm. the more males you're going to get and the younger you are the more female there are like i never noticed that before but yeah i'm, yeah, I'm no, thinking 100%. of my elementary school and yeah it was there was like one male teacher every all the dudes wanted to go to him yeah because i'm like i don't want to hang out with this girl all fucking day. exactly <laughs> and that's so like yeah my my k through eight experience i didn't have a single male teacher until i got to science in like case or through sixth seventh and eighth grade i had one male teacher and he was the male teacher for all three of those grade levels for science now but, your your sixth seventh and eighth was that kind of broke it was that breaking classes like how they do high school because i know every like most states do it differently yeah well so i went to catholic school oh uh, pre-k <laughs> through 12th grade so um but so but the sixth seventh eighth grade you did get broken out so that other teachers taught different subjects and stuff like along those lines but they were all female except okay. for my male science teacher i feel like now there there are Catholic high schools, right? Yeah, did I you went go to one? You went to Catholic high school, and then you had male teachers in the Catholic high school. Yes, because okay. uh, the majority of them you see in disciplinary roles or mm. coaches, and n none of them taught any kind of arts classes or anything along those lines. We did have one teacher who was um, an art teacher who was male, but he also did ceramics so if that implies anything <laughs> like that that is a hundred percent an implication of what his recreational activities were was he gay no he was oh. super stoner oh um, okay i was thinking gay <laughs> <laughs> like I, I don't, i'm like oh, i'm like he can make a bong like no one's business okay <laughs> <laughs> but no so he was but he was the only one in all of my a bunch of my teachers were um military in some way shape or form previously hmm that's odd I guess maybe in the military you find religion because it's almost like jail eh, in yeah. some regards. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was more along the lines like they knew discipline, so the sports aspect was easy to play directly into. So, but it, like I won't lie, I went to a great high school. I just didn't utilize my education to the best it possibly could have been. Was it a private school? Yeah. Yeah. Mo all the religious schools are private, or most of them. Most of them. I won't say mm -hmm. all. I don't know. Yeah. Around here they are. Like yeah. Gonzaga Prep. Yeah. New Payne. Yeah. I don't know any 
middle schools. Well, actually, there's a on Park down here. Yeah. There's a religious the, school, a Catholic school. Yeah. Then there's there are a bunch here in town that are K through eight that are. Now, why do you think that is? That Catholic or religious schools are better than public schools? So I I can't say that the education is better, but like so basically what it boils down to, and like on an initial reaction to that question is they have the opportunity to truly pick their staff because they can adjust their salaries mm. a lot more liberally because they have an alumni base that feeds directly into it versus state funds and federal funds. So, right. Okay. Now, so in the, at the public school level, they don't get to pick their staff? Well, they get to, <clears throat> but... But they're stuck with their salary, like their pay grades. Like right, they're, so they're the better very... teachers are going to go to the private schools because yeah. they're going to make more money. Exactly. If you're good, you're going to go somewhere else. And, like, they get paid more. Like, those teachers get huge bonuses at Catholic schools when they're a coach or something along those lines. Their stipend for that activity right. is way more than you're going to see in a public school. Okay. That the makes per- sense. Yeah. The perks are bigger because there's, like, if you're a part of the Alumni Association, they can do tons of things. They do tons of activities. But... The other piece of it is you have so many more connections through a Catholic school. As a student or as a teacher? As or both? B- both. Okay. <laughs> because you have this whole association revolving around the school that allows, like, if you graduate and you stay connected with the school, other people can utilize you to move around in the world, whether it's financially, job-wise, mm-hmm. college-wise. like. So it's almost like a sorority exactly yeah. and it's it's who you know mm-hmm. and that's like 100 percent. like a lot of people there were legacy kids like i was i like my parents and my aunts and uncles all went to that school before me did you get a discount because of that no <laughs> what i did get was more laps and a very bad reputation more laps <laughs> <laughs> run that shit <laughs> oh dude I, i'll share a fun story with you so when i showed up for sophomore PE, because we still took PE because it's a sports school, so right. you, you had to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I show up for PE, and my teacher looks at me, and it's like the whole row of letter P last names are all lined up. And he goes through the first couple guys, and he's like, I knew your dad. This is going to be awful for you. <laughs> goes to him, and he gets to me, and my dad's the youngest at eight. So he was like, who is your dad? <laughs> and I'm standing there, and you got to imagine, like, a 15 year old TJ just standing there being like, I have to choose right. Cause (laughs) my dad was not a good student. So, and that's putting it lightly. Like supposedly he just had a terrible reputation for just being trouble. Mm. And so I I'm standing, I'm standing there. I'm scrawny. I have no idea what I'm going to do. And I pick my uncle who I know was MVP of the football team. Like just this all American football player. I'm like, yeah, that's my dad. Sounds like a mistake. But oh yeah. Going. <laughs> Huge mistake because it's like, oh, all right, right, right. That's great. And he moves on to the guy behind me and it's like, no big deal. So, and he, <laughs> the next <laughs> PE class is two days from then. Cause we had a very funky schedule and he, he he's like, you lied. Oh. And I'm like, oh, no, you actually looked up who my dad was. <laughs> Why did I not think you were going to do that? <laughs> because you know I'm a liar. And so he he totally did it. He looked up who my dad was. He was like, you're exactly like your old man. Mm. And he just sends me to go run laps. for and My class periods were like an hour and a half long. So I just ran for an hour and a half. And he would come out every once in a while. And, like, it was... It was too early in the school year for me to know who he was as a person to know that I probably could have hid behind a tree for like an hour and then like <laughs> gotten back out and started running again. But that that just wasn't going to play out in my favor. He made he ran me to death. And Ugh. there were several times where he punished me purely on the fact that I have my last name and I did deserve it. So, well, maybe now. You appreciate it because you like to run now, right? Oh, yeah. No, that's <laughs> Maybe suffering. Maybe instilled something. No, no. <laughs> when I finally became a teacher, I actually emailed him and was like, hey, I did this. And he was just like, well, you didn't make it very far. <laughs> like, you are the worst. He also, when he, when, so I didn't shake many teachers' hands when I graduated from high school because... I didn't like any of those people, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I shook his hand and I'm, I was like, oh, like, I'm going to shake your hand, Mr. Uh-huh. O. And he's like, all right. He's like, I didn't know they let people like you graduate. And I was like, I didn't know they employed people like you. You're basically dead. And just walked off the stage. Was he old? Oh yeah. He was super old, but he was just so angry. Like I, he understood who I was as a person and he, he did teach around me to make sure that I didn't totally screw up all the time. Yeah. And there was a bunch of times where he should have thrown me out of class and he didn't. 
Mm. Yeah, so he was he was a pretty solid dude, but it, that's the kind of teacher that has the flexibility inside the Catholic school system to be good and like he did good work. He was a quality teacher when it really boiled down to it. Okay. But that's kind of the difference where you have the pick of the litter in mm -hmm. that situation versus a public school where you kind of get the chaff. Like you're not you're not getting the greatest of teachers mm -hmm. and you know like that whole tenure situation in terms of public schools could be disadvantageous like in new york they have a i don't know if it's still a thing because i've clearly been out of education <laughs> for a while but they used to have lemon rooms where teachers had tenure but they were too they didn't care any what, what explain what is, what's yeah. a lemon room so a lemon room is a teacher who has tenure who who can't can't be fired basically they can't be fired they're part of the teachers union so there's no way to get rid of them that's when they get in that pediophilia yeah, God. Well, that's why they put him in this room. Uh, so, but they uh, they basically don't care about the job anymore, and they're not going to teach because they don't have to. Mm -hmm. They can just cash a paycheck and, and leave. And so they, the New York realized that they they had this situation where they were just having these garbage teachers getting tenure. Like they'd be great, and then they would get tenure and be done. And they just started shipping them to this room where they just sit for eight hours they don't have to do anything but they collect a paycheck because that's what their contract dictates really that's yeah. just wasting taxpayer money exactly but if you put them back in the classroom you're not going to get anything out of them and the kid's going to suffer you're not getting anything out of them now anyway but you can't fire them because the union will keep them employed that's when you gotta throw those slutty high school girls in that room with them and see what happens. dude it is not even gender specific man it's both sides of the right. board it's so bad yeah but i mean 80-year-old Mrs. Peacock ain't fucking 17-year-old Jimmy from the football team. <laughs> hey, I don't know if he wears any more, like, spandex <laughs> under armor. Who knows what's going to happen? But, I, yeah, so <laughs> they, there's, there's, there's that precedent with teachers' unions where that, that kind of thing can happen pretty easily. Yeah. But it's not happening as, in as many states, but the East Coast, I know, had a huge issue with it. Mm. And all, most East Coast schools, well, at least in New York, like, P.S., 107 oh yeah anything with a number you're like <laughs> all right where where i went to school i went to school here with the west valley and then actually east valley there's no north south valley but <laughs> no <laughs> no yeah so it's just that kind of thing but you, what's even funnier about it so like i went to private school in my town but i had the choice of three high schools immediately within biking distance of of my home that were public yeah, well, of that public or private so okay. my school that i went to was a five minute walk away from school and somehow i still managed to not be from home yeah okay. and then there was um the public high school which was like 15 minutes away not a big deal but all three of those schools are top high schools in the area like even like the public schools are what's, even top what tier. city was this mountain view so mountain view, mountain view high yeah. is top tier los altos high is top tier and they're they're gnarly like they're competitive they pump out great kids but it has less to do with the um like i would say it has less to do with the teachers and more with the mentality of the parents sending their kids there because it's not it's not like a, you're a public school where it's like i'm gonna go dump my kid there it's like oh no like you need to be doing sports you need to have an activity because this area is a um a mill for athletes. Oh, well, not only a mill for athletes, <laughs> but you got to realize we have Stanford right there, not too far away. Like, mm. they mm. pump out top tier students. Like, that's that's what all three of those schools do. Like, yeah, you're always going to have your bottom end. Like, they're like the G League for Stanford. You know, what the G League is. I don't. Uh, so it used to be called the D League for the NBA, the okay. developmental league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had this. T <laughs> yeah, that's awful. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, no, that's that's. Because, yeah, I, I just remember, like, a couple of those kids just, like, joking around to what college you're going to go to. They're like, oh, like, I'm going to Yale. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, man, that's great. He's like, I'm just kidding. I'm going to Stanford. It's like, <laughs> like that's a bad thing. Yeah. Like, you're like, dude, oh, I'm going. you didn't get the Ivy League, but you got the fucking. <laughs> yeah, like, you ma you got it made. But it, you also, like, speaking educationally, it's funny. Like, so you see these kids that get pumped out of these schools. They do all the extracurriculars. They do all this charity mm -hmm. work. They get you know 5.0s for gpa because they're taking so many honors classes mm -hmm. they do all this stuff but um the thing that changed i think between 2003 and 2008 like basically those graduating classes google with the way that they were handling their employment saying that you needed to do so much in terms of charity work and be involved in the community there was one girl i remember from my graduating class who aced everything had amazing grades 
but she didn't have any extracurriculars. So a bunch of colleges denied her mm. because she had basically what she had shown was that, yes, you're very adept at this, but you don't give anything back is how they perceived it, which was awful because she's brilliant, like even to this day. Mm-hmm. But she didn't get accepted in some of the top schools because she didn't have this extra piece because she decided to devote herself to her education instead of like, you know, I think maybe she was on chess club or something like that. But you're like, okay, nerd. <laughs> hey, man, I was hey, never. Chess is I, fun, yeah, I was like, I've never been. I would, no chess club for me. But um, yeah, so like because you never gave anything back while like on the other end of the spectrum, like. My senior year, I dumped every single extracurricular. I stopped going to soccer. I quit band. I quit all of my clubs except for radio club, which I ended up getting kicked out of for swearing on the air too many times. But because <laughs> yeah, FCC has really bad things about that. Mm-hmm. And especially when you're 18 and just cussing on the air mm-hmm. for your high school's radio. Luckily, um, we're on the internet and it don't fucking matter. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I'm like, oh, 18 year old TJ, only if you had known about the internet. Um, but yeah, no, it, it was there. Exactly. But I also like, I also did a ton of charity work back then, even though I dropped everything else. Like, I think my senior year, I did over 100 hours worth of charity work. Damn. And I, I would have been a better qualified candidate just based on that stuff for some of these schools versus her, which is, you know, which was unfortunate because she was way smarter than I was. And I'm like, Ugh. that brings me to such a good point. But I have another question I want to ask. Yeah. So I'm going to try to remember both. So going back to what we first started talking about with the pedophiles. Yeah, we kind of tangented there. No, 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 it's fine. Um, I went to a public school. Yeah. Um, there was a girl on the softball team. And it, she got caught fucking the softball coach in the softball shed. Oh. She's a DG for sure. It's a dirty girl. <laughs> um, and, then, and I'm sitting over here thinking about all, like, the sex cases you hear about. Now, with Catholics, like, yeah, you hear about the boys getting molested at the altar. But I don't think I've ever heard of a a private school sex scandal. Was there anything like that while you were there? No, not by any means. <clears throat> I like so, yeah, there was nothing along those lines. Not that I can, not that I can recall at all. But you also have to realize there's way more money there. So the ability. To, yeah, but if you want to fuck, you're gonna fuck. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> that's what it is. But if you're gonna shut it down, it's easy enough. True. <laughs> like that's that's why you have like not saying that the school would ever do anything along those lines, and I'm not gonna implicate my high school in any way, in any shape or form, <laughs> in that fashion. But like that's easier to do. Like. You know, like with the government itself, it's hard enough to cover up anything that comes out, especially in the public school, because you're going to like the the parents are going to have more of a voice. Mm -hmm. um, And that's that's just the way it's going to be. There's no overarching entity that's going to like try and squash that down besides like the school district. But it could easily get out of control before they even know about it. Yeah. So but in terms of being in a private school you have control over that whole situation. Like you can manage it where things can be resolved without a lot of exposure. Right. There might be a rumor mill, but it's not going to get past that. Right. So it, it could happen. I just don't let it get oh, out. Oh, yeah. No, it could happen. Oh, lots. Fucking religious people are like, lots of things can happen. you guys. <laughs> yeah, come on. The Vatican's been covering up child molestation for decades. <laughs> it's like holy hand grenades, man. Like, you can't even keep it in your pants long enough to get your smock on. You're like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> like, all of those. Oh, God. Yeah, every time that pops up on my news feed, I'm like, Really? Is this news anymore? Like, yeah. can we just wrap this up? Nobody like, literally, cares. figuratively? It'll, it'll come back up in 20 years like R. Kelly. <laughs> oh, God. And he's actually, he's uh, he's getting sued again for um, some kind of sex act of some kind. Because I guess a new video footage of another person got yeah. leaked. Where yeah. some, Well, he's on trial. I don't know if he's getting sued, but that's what he's yeah. on trial for. He just got out of jail. I didn't realize he had just gotten out of jail. I just read it while I was on vacation a week ago. Okay, so I'll break it down, but I, I still want to go to the other point. So Yeah, um, sorry. <laughs> so there was the Lifetime documentary on R. Kelly. Yeah, I never saw it. Okay, so it just came out recently. Oh, okay. So, like, everybody knew about, like, like when Chappelle's show was real popular, you had that one yeah, to piss on you video. Exactly. Like, so everybody knew. Which is gold. <laughs> everybody knew about R. Kelly peeing on girls. Yeah. Everybody knew he married Aaliyah when she was 14. Nobody gave a shit. Yeah. But, which is fucked up in itself, right? Yeah, you're like, all R. Right. Kelly can sing, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that matters. I'm going to keep buying his album. I believe. <laughs> you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> um, so, anyway, so uh, I believe it's Lifetime did a documentary. Um, and they had two 
girls who allegedly were with R. Kelly when they were underage. And boom, Lifetime puts it out. People are like, oh my God, that Robert is fucking children and he's a fucking monster and blah, 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 we need to lock him up. And they fucking did. <laughs> They're like, <laughs> like they, sorry. They literally, like, so like a year ago it came out that he has a sex cult. Nobody gave a shit, right? Because I'm guessing yeah. you didn't hear about it. No. Right. TJ's white and he's not in the hip hop scene, so I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't care about any of that. Right. <laughs> um, so nobody cared. Yeah. Um, so now the documentary comes out. They literally go arrest him. And guess who the fuck bails him out? Who? Members of his sex cult. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we miss our ringleader. We need right. him back. Exactly. And Who's going to put this stuff on the calendar? <laughs> <laughs> two of the girls were in the courtroom, like, testifying for him. Like, no, he's not. We're there on our own free will. We're not being held against our will. It's crazy. Like, I don't know. And he's like, a, it's like a weird pyramid scheme underneath it. Like, Tom Cruise is a part of it. Scientology's <laughs> got its in. They're like, we're just trying to make sure that this is sanitary. Right. No, that's <laughs> not a part of it. But the really crazy thing is, you think R. Kelly, you think millionaire. Yeah. Couldn't pay his own $100,000 bail. Well, it makes sense because if he's running, the, well, he clearly doesn't know how to run a cult then because that's, <laughs> that's number one is you got to get paid. You get some so, money, motherfucker. Yeah, you, you got to get that up front and then everyone's got to sign a waiver. Mm -hmm. It's basically like low scale la laser tag, but <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he clearly doesn't know what he's doing. Like I could run a cult better than he can, Yeah. but I, I'm lazy and tired. So that's not going to happen. But yeah. what was your other point? Um, for college. So that yeah. girl couldn't get in, right? Yeah stupid um so on last week's show i had josh over here the big lineman for my football team yes yeah that? yeah um and we were talking about a presidential candidate andrew yang i don't know you're okay probably, i haven't probably read into him yet yeah. yeah no not yet um his thing is universal income and they started talking about uh bernie and how like uh, the universal school won't work but then he talked about how college um in the last three decades college has risen like four times yeah for costs but the education hasn't got any better no it hasn't by any means and the other interesting thing like um i don't know if you watch uh last week tonight with john oliver i've seen some yeah so his episode from this last weekend was kind of talking about some things along those lines in terms of jobs because he it, the episode was actually about automation in terms of like machines taking okay that's taking what, that's, our jobs yep that's um, a lot about what andrew yang and the universal income yeah. is about yeah so it's if you actually look at it, our automation isn't actually getting rid of a ton of jobs. It's more of like modifying what the actual job requirement is and making the the workplace safer in a lot depending of ways. Depending on the job, yeah. Yeah, no, of course, depending <laughs> on the job. And a lot of this is situational. But it was more along the lines of how college needs to be modified because the people graduating now need to be the flexible in their ability to adapt to new job situations mm -hmm. like even myself i've had several jobs since moving to spokane mm -hmm. and that's been a wildly life-changing experience for me mm -hmm. like i thought i was 100 percent a teacher mm -hmm. and then i learned that i am a salesman because of teaching mm -hmm. and now i know that i'm awful because <laughs> of what I've learned so far. Um, <laughs> so that it, it's just one of those interesting things where it's like I didn't know these things about myself before, until I was put in situations where I had to adapt. Mm -hmm. But my education allowed me to do that. Like, that's mm -hmm. exactly what I learned. Like, you have to adapt to your situation. Even as a teacher, you got to be doing it on the fly. And that makes sense to me. But if you get a rigid, structured, true like box form education where it's like here are your classes you take these classes you write these papers you get this piece of paper that says you wrote a bunch of papers <laughs> yeah. so that based on other people's research exactly <laughs> i wrote papers on papers on papers right. but and so that kind of thing is interesting and it's but it makes you rigid you can't adapt like I'm an engineer. Now I have to be an engineer. I don't know how to do sales. I don't know how to do anything. Like that's you're like I know how to be an engineer and I don't know how to do anything else. Or some of my friends who graduated with psych degrees and that's awesome. Like cool. You graduate with a psych degree. What are you now? What are they you now? You are a barista. Like that's like <laughs> you're like I get that that's 
like if you're going to be a psych major you have to get a master's or a phd like you can't just graduate with a psych major you can't like there's so much of that like i almost did that same thing but then someone's like you work well with kids and i was like well i tolerate them so <laughs> it, it, and that changed my whole direction but that that was an opportunity that i was given and not one that is available to everyone like that's not something like my friends who went to school you did x you are expected to do y but all that's offered is a through q so that doesn't work mm -hmm. so he that that whole episode was more about flexibility in terms of my own opinion where it's like i gotta i gotta learn how to be multiple things like when you ask your kid like that was their thing at the end of the episode which was quite funny but it was you, you ask a kid what do you want to be when you grow up well it's like well what are your f top five choices because <laughs> <You're like>, <laughs> number one's probably not gonna play out right. so <laughs> absolutely astronaut not so much how do you feel about being a garbage man because that's really where i see you going <laughs> you kind of smell but no you're hard degree. Working. yeah yeah you're you're fine dude if i could be a garbage man that job is fun I mean, you could be a garbage man tj no because the jobs are actually really hard to come by and in spokane yeah they you are. have to know somebody to get in like that's 100 percent of how this town functions you still it, work for the city tj I, 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 dude, <laughs> their hazard pay oh man that's on point that's that's i need that in my life but i don't think they make as much as we do they don't make as much as we do they work way harder than we do and they smell so i but they don't gotta listen to people bitch no and they're guaranteed <laughs> pension if you make it all the way through yeah. so that's that's kind of what i'm looking at i'm like all right can I get retired? Let me get this pay cut exactly. for a better life after. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I'm trying to look out for me at the end because I know Social Security is not going to be around long enough for me to do anything about that. <laughs> and health insurance is just going through the roof. So now that we got onto the automation, let me... <sighs> people on the internet be like this is a fucking Andrew Yang Patsy like, all he wants is Andrew Yang <laughs> I don't give a shit about politics you know this yeah I'm just letting everybody else know I don't give a fuck about politics I do the fuck I want to do yeah um, so Andrew Yang his like his big platform for the universal health care is you get a thousand dollars a month opt in opt out yeah every American because of within the next five to ten years truck driving jobs will be completely on top of this. So, and I, I have a little bit of information on that. that Go for That it. kind of begs to differ. So my Go own brother it. test drives automated driving vehicles. Okay. For who? I don't know a company off the top of my head. Okay. It's, it's a, so like basically he works for a smaller firm that tests the software. Okay. And just to kind of perfect things. Um, Got it. But it, it was interesting because I was like, hey, like, like every time I hear about a Tesla like running into a median and exploding <laughs> and killing a bunch of people, like you're like, oh my god, like is th this clearly isn't reality? And he's like, well, you got to understand, like there are insane situations that he's like, you you can't predict. There still has to be someone in the car to predict that. Mm -hmm. So the so I think the truck driving jobs, like yeah, that sounds kind of realistic, but someone still has to be in the car because someone has to be held accountable, right. and that. That creates a really dangerous situation insurance-wise because oh, <laughs> then it all falls back on the insurance company every single time, and there is no one to be held accountable. It's a and which makes it really dangerous for us individuals because right. if you get hit by that truck, like if if that truck causes an accident, you don't really have any reprieve. Like it's not like us suing an insurance company anymore. Like you you get your attorney. They've got all the money in the world to fight back. Well, I feel like for the autonomous vehicles, they would definitely have film. So, like, yeah. if somebody cut the fucking car off. Oh, yeah. You then know, you, then yeah. No, good. no, I totally understand that. It's just more of, like, how much are they, like, because I know now most of those commercial lines policies just kind of, they're like, all right, we're just going to pay for this. Like, yeah. we need this to go away. We've got millions of dollars. Billions. They just pay for it. To go, but, yeah, any, but in on the other aspect, once they realize that they can kind of leverage that against and just be like, all right, cool, like, we actually can fight this. Yeah. Then it becomes kind of disastrous because then you don't have that ability to resolve your claim so within what, reason. So what Yang is saying is like right now it's autonomous cars are three they cause three percent of accidents, which and he says that is absolutely you cannot do that. You cannot have that. It's one hundred percent. But then he's saying the autonomous stuff like Amazon right now. Yeah. They're literally they have self driving trucks out there right now crazy but what they have at the moment is like an engineer who's vr'd in yeah basically like a drone almost but yeah not driving the truck but being with the truck and monitoring everything the coding so that's why he says there's projections within 10 years 
all truck driving jobs will be gone because of how you brought up the accidents. Truck driving accidents yeah. are huge, and they cause companies so much money, yeah. product, everything. Where autonomous cars, if they get it down, it won't happen. Have you ever seen the movie, um, the Tom Cruise movie? Uh, fuck, they predict the pre. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, yeah. I don't. It's, I want to say Time Cop, but it's not. Minority no. Report. That's there what you doing. go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're, it's like the cars on that, pretty much. Like we're getting to that. No, and and that's <laughs> that's something interesting because like, in like if if those companies really wanted to capitalize that and really show that they care about that to minimize that kind of situation. It would be creating the infrastructure to have that separate lane. Like, you're going to build a separate road that is autonomous. Like, there is nothing else on it. But then you're basically building a train system, and then you're like, all right, well, we we don't really care about trains anymore. Like, who really needs coal? Um, You know, but... Yeah, Yang was talking about, like, the bullet train, too. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) no, but there's... I got to send you that interview. You got to watch it. He's, like, he talked about a lot of good shit. (laughs) No, it it, it is interesting, because it's it's just one of those things where you're like, this quickly spirals. But you got to realize that the jobs will again change, because there's going to be new issues. Like, yes, you have to have the engineer you'll have someone vr basically you're gonna have like security. no they'll get rid of the vr they don't want the vr because they, they have to pay for that so the whole reason for the autonomous is those trucks don't have to stop anymore where those truck drivers right. can only drive like 12 hours a day right now exactly the autonomous cars don't have to stop ever and they're gonna be more fuel efficient because they're gonna change gears better all that shit and companies will make that investment over employees calling out sick all that shit oh yeah <clears throat> and yeah I just, it'll be interesting to see how, like, cause they'll have, they really are going to have to do something insane because there's so much, like, think about the, um, the pass, like coming over Snoqualmie Pass. Like if the trucks can't do that, like even if they're yeah. autonomous, like weather is going to fuck with that. Truck. Exactly. Yeah. Like, dude, like when I was driving last year for our snowboarding trip, I did a 180. Like we were like we were just driving. Well, I, I did a full 360 because it freaked everybody out, and then I just kept going. And everyone in the car, in the car was like, "What have you done?" I was like, "Well, we stayed on the highway. There was no one else around. I just whipped this sucker around and just put it back into drive, and we're good to go." And then my wife about killed me. But it was, uh, but it's it's that kind of thing where it's like if you don't, you can't do that autonomously. Like you, True. you can't predict that and feeling that out. I, it, that, I feel like that's so much coding and knowing how to manage that driving situation is going to be difficult. Like even like the funny story that my brother tells me is he had one of the engineers ride along with him because it's for, for the company he works for, it's a driver and then a person's there in the passenger seat mm-hmm. and they both switch off and they just kind of do their thing and they get told, Hey, you got to go out. You're going to practice right turns today. Mm-hmm. And that's all you're going to do. So he had a he had the head engineer for left hand turns get in the car, and they went through an intersection. Car made a left hand turn, and he's just like, "I didn't know it could do that." <laughs> and my brother's just like, "What? The lead this, engineer? Yeah, this is know. your job. You're supposed to know that the. What are you putting me out here doing? Like this is the worst situation. You're risking my life. But it's like honestly, the most the most trouble that they have is." shift changes is when all the drivers get robbed because they all come back to the shop at the same time because cars programmed and scheduled to get back to the shop at a they certain get robbed yeah because it's not in a great area it's in oakland oh, so okay. yeah <laughs> so basically all these cars come in and there isn't a lot of security and it's just a bunch of like basically guys who are pizza delivery guys that just don't ever deliver anything yeah and they're stuck in these cars and they just have to come back and they stop, and immediately someone can hit them all in the same go. Mm. But they've, they've, had a, <laughs> they've had to seriously ramp up their security because, like, I guess a bunch of guys got robbed. And it was just like, dude, I know this is Oakland, but this is a little cliche. <laughs> Shout out to Oakland. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. Or what, my brother, uh, he's, he calls it, um, I forget what he calls it. It's like the Whole Foods Halo or something like that, where it's like a certain distance around a Whole Foods in Oakland that is the safe zone. Like, it's like gentrified <laughs> in that area where it's like basically millennials, like just crowding around yeah. a Starbucks, hoping that no Downtown. one robs them. Yeah, yeah, they're like, please don't kill us. We don't have enough money to live in San Francisco, but uh, we still want to be cool. But <laughs> please don't shoot my family. Um, but... <laughs> It's just like the funniest thing, because it's just like literally 
the housing is more expensive around a Whole Foods purely based on the fact oh, yeah. that it's near a Whole Foods. It's like, I do want to pay $6 for an avocado and my price of living <laughs> is about $10,000 a month for this cardboard box. Right. So, <laughs> and I'm like... In the back of the Whole Foods. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this shipping container <laughs> sleeps 12, you know? <laughs> well, uh, speaking, speaking of the Whole Foods thing, so another part of the autonomy um, for jobs um, is that uh, retail... Mm. Things like Whole Foods, you, they don't even have cashiers anymore, right? With the, the way Amazon's doing it. Yeah, yeah. You just go in, you get scanned. So the biggest jobs in America, according to Mr. Yang, is retail and truck driving. And, like, I wish I knew more about it, but that's that's a huge... Like, that. that's just another thing where it's, like, people have to get retrained. You, you have to get a career. You have to, like... Okay, have... let me give you this, because that's what he said that all of his opposition is. For the universal income. And yeah. I, I don't know if you're for it or against it. We won't get into it. Because somebody's like, are all your fucking podcasts going to be political? Like, no, I don't give a no, shit. No, um, I care so little about that. <laughs> right. But the, the retraining, he said, well, most truck drivers, if we take a look at a truck driver, he's a middle-aged man. Yeah. Who didn't, may have graduated high school, may have not. So clearly, he wasn't good at school anyway. And now you want to retrain them to what? Code? <laughs> yeah no no that, that yeah no that, that there was a a little tidbit about that where it's like you want a 55 year old guy who's never touched a computer in his right. life to now use one every single day for his employment yeah they're like nah that's not exactly what we're shooting for but like there does have to be some adaptability like oh yeah like this is now you, you have you have to ad- <laughs> what is it uh, Bear grills, Adapt Survive <laughs> or Adapt Improvise Survive Drink that pee <laughs> Exactly <laughs> Come on man That's how the coding is. That's how it starts You drink a little Of your own piss And then all of a sudden You're using a computer At age 60 But oh, <laughs> It's a steep downhill But <laughs> Stem cells <for> Exactly <laughs> God damn um, yeah, I'm trying to get educated Over here Can I have another hit um, No I, I Yeah There's huge flaws But we also have to realize that our whole economy is just totally changing so it, it's yeah. you have to make a choice like even even now it's like you look at the Spokane like oh so this was a horrifying observation that I made publicly at my, one of my old, uh, old jobs okay. I was like I don't understand this like I grew up in California I never saw so many cars on the side of the highway and I used to commute from Spokane to Coeur d'Alene mm-hmm. and I would see cars all up and down the highway that are just broken down left there with a the big cop check mark on uh-huh. it saying this guy needs to be towed mm-hmm. and I was like I, I asked my employer I was like hey guys like what the hell is going on like why are there so many cars on the side of the road is there like some like weird hazard I don't know about and they're like <laughs> this is a blue collar area this is not white collar work and I'm like you're really right because there's two puns there because my uniform is blue and <laughs> this job sucks. Um, <laughs> but I was like, ah, oh, that makes way more sense. There is not, there's not a huge amount of money out here and there's like certain jobs. It's like basically in this area, economy wise, you're looking at insurance, healthcare, or a lawyer, basically. Those are your three jobs that are the highest paying in this area and that's... Or city employee. Let's be serious. That's not even that great paying all the time. Like mm. that's that's if here it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll I'll have to take your word for yeah. it. But it's it's one of those things where it's like there isn't a burgeoning industry out here. Like, no, it's you're like, right. So it's well, I think they're turning Airway Heights into the next Vegas, man. Have you been out to Northern Quest lately? So I I I don't gamble. Right. I don't have the attention span for it. But I, I've seen the <laughs> <laughs> like I get so bored. Um, yeah, no, but I have seen it, like, blowing up out there. It's just, like, one of those things that just kind of blows my mind. And, like, I have to say, their whole movie theater out there mm-hmm. is dope. Did you go to it? Yeah. Yeah, I went and saw Aquaman there. And I was like, I can order a beer? <laughs> like, and you bring it to me? And I can drink it during this movie. How much was it, though? Oh, God, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> that. That was steep. That was steep. And my wife and I had already been drinking, and we showed up there and drank more. And mm-hmm. But I was like, oh, dope, I have the munchies. Oh. I can order it off this stupid menu. I hit this button, but I was not nearly as bad as the woman next to me who was like, how many Mai Tais are you going to put away there, honey? This movie is two and a half hours long. And every time we order like anything, you uh, re-up. So that's uh, you're having a good time or you really like Jason Momoa. So I, I don't know. <laughs> Did you like the movie? I thought it was pretty fantastic for a DC movie. Mm. I do qualify it as a DC movie. It's, oh, it is a DC movie. Yeah, no, because it's uh, all the rest of them are garbage. But um, <laughs> Wonder no. Woman was all right. Hmm? Wonder Woman was alright it, it was okay I liked Wonder Woman I didn't like Aquaman 
Oh, you didn't like Aquaman? Corny. Yeah. Why are you swimming in jeans, bruh? Why are you fighting underwater with gloves on? Have you you never fought in jeans? Are you never swam in jeans? I uh, have. It's not comfortable. No, no. <laughs> there's a lot of chafing going on. You feel mad uncomfortable. And there's some sagging issues as soon as you get out of the water. But <laughs> none of that is good. None of that is good. I don't know. I, I just, I thought it was better than, well, and I also didn't have to like watch it with the brightness turned all the way up. I'm not trying to watch a movie that's made in all black. What do you mean? Justice oh, League. Watching, I didn't see Justice League. Oh God. It was painful. I didn't even watch it in one go and I love comic book movies. And I don't I was like, like DC movies at all. Oh, I, I can only watch the Christian Bale Batmans. Right. That's yeah. what I say. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> that's as far as my involvement goes, but I still watch them anyway. Like, yeah, Suicide Squad was tolerable, but. It was garbage. It was rushed. I know. I know. Yeah, it was rushed. So crammed up in the story. God, and they just killed off. Think about if they would have did uh, Suicide Squad kind of like how they did Infinity War. It would have been much better. Oh, yeah. No, Take with, the without fucking question. time to tell the story. God, and now all like, <clears throat> have you seen any of the DC TV stuff that's come out? Mm-mm. All of it is shit. There's nothing good about it. Like, <laughs> I, like, well, like, are you talking like the Flash Netflix show or something? No, because e- even the, the Flash is great. Like, I wish they didn't. I wish they'd use that flash in the movie because, like, never mind. There's so many issues with how they put together Justice League because I love the flash and they just annihilated his character. Mm. They made him look like a bumbling idiot. And I'm like, he's not because by the time in all of the comics, by the time he gets to Justice League, he is at the top of his game. He's literally one of the most powerful human beings. Mm. Like, Superman can't time travel. Guess who can time travel? The Flash. That's that's a thing. Like that's and I I don't I'm like you put him into this movie being like this like teenage kid when in reality he's like one of the smartest superheroes. Like he is he is like comparable to Spider Man in terms of like advanced intelligence. Like that he had to figure it out because he was a CSI. He had already like yeah yeah it's a point of contention. All right, let me ask you this: When Disney buys DC. All right, in all of our hopes and dreams, so someone else can do these movies over again and do them better. No, it it will happen. Yeah. Disney will own the world. Okay. <laughs> will they yeah. do DC vs. Marvel? Ooh, that's a tough one because there are a couple comics over there that do like weird crossovers where they're mashing up uh, superheroes. Like they, Marvel and DC have done this before. Have they? Yeah. So they, I I can't name the comic off the top of my head but i've seen that's why we need chase here (laughs) yeah right um but yeah so there's like a there's a couple there's a couple versions of that that are actually really interesting because like some of the mashups would be awesome like you take like wolverine and mash him up with like you know mash him with someone like the flash and that would be incredible like some like weird male chitara version but um like it would just be like wolverine versus nightcrawler well, Wolverine and Nightcrawler are from the same universe, <laughs> right? But um, no, it'd be it'd be super interesting to actually see what that would look like, like, and you could have like so like, oh, like a like an Avengers versus uh, Justice League situation, like because the Justice League is larger than that original five, where it's like Aquaman, mm-hmm. Superman, mm-hmm. Batman, Wonder Woman. Who am I missing? <clears throat> Flash, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. <coughs> Aquaman, Flash. I think it's those five. So those five are the original, but there are other ones that are a part of that that that, that make that group more interesting. But like, like the other thing I, I that I always have struggled with has been DC's <coughs> whole thing where they're they're just overpowered. Like they're 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 not interesting because they shouldn't have any real struggles. The superheroes. Yeah, like versus. Well, Batman doesn't have any powers. Yeah, but, you know, the power of millionaires is awesome. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I would love to be flush with Look cash. Look at R. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that sounds like a poor business model on his part. <laughs> he clearly screwed the pooch on that one. But yeah, maybe potentially in, in reality. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I just love Marvel so much because their characters, I feel, are way more have way more depth to them, and that's just me yeah. being super biased. So th- that's a whole different thing. But it would be awesome to like you know see Disney rule everything, and all of us have to like buy Disney crap a hundred percent of the time. But I feel like there's gonna be some battle like between like Google and Disney as they slowly grow larger and larger, and like because I don't I don't know if if can Google be bought? And come on, Jeff Bezos, no. Jeff Bezos doesn't do anything in terms of like actual. 
like charitable work when it really boils down to like because i saw a thing the other day about the the portion of his salary that he actually donates to charity is almost minuscule in the comparison to the billions that he makes oh well, that's his salary but amazon does charity stuff yeah yeah the company does Maybe exactly not his personal wealth but truth truth but i just find it to be super funny because i'm like watching amazon just buy everything because they own whole foods yeah so it's which just like, will be in every what used to be sears coming soon Oh, yay. Perfect. You didn't see that? No, I, I, so, just, I don't like to suffer. Um, <laughs> the model right now is that, because Sears is going under, Yeah. Um, that Whole Foods will just move into where Sears is. That's a huge fucking, like, if you go to Sears here. Yeah, that thing Mall, is massive. Like, any Sears is how much ginormous. How food are you putting in that motherfucker? I don't know. How much celery water are you willing to buy? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you it's not me. even, it, did you see that thing when, uh, when, <laughs> what was it, Whole Foods put out water with, like, a sprig of, uh, of asparagus into it, and they were mm-hmm. calling it asparagus water, and they were, like, selling it for, like, $5. And people bought it because they're oh, yeah. fucking tarts. And you were like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, if I could, like, if I'm, I'm to sell bottles of water with just random grass clippings in there. Can are you gonna buy this shit? Well, this Levar Ball dude. sells his own water now. Oh my god! <laughs> and, and he was on um, Undisputed. I don't know if you know what that is. Uh, Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Oh no, I don't. So it's a sports talk show. Okay. Um, and Levar, you know who Levar Ball is? I believe so. Yeah, <laughs> the one who Big Baller brand his yes. sons. Are yes, 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and he was on there selling water, and Shannon Sharp's like, "What's so special about this water?" And he's like, "So straight from Lithuania, right off the mountain." Like, no. What's special about your water, bro? Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, like, what's special about your water? <laughs> Just because you shipped it internationally doesn't mean I give a shit about it. Right. It's like, oh, I forget. There's like a couple bottle, like bottled water companies where it's like legit tap water. Like, there's nothing. Oh, yeah. yeah, they're like it's straight like the from- Walmart brand. Oh. Dude, some of the other ones are even part of that. Like, it's just like... I love these ones. It's Nestle Pure Life. I swear there's, like, hints of chocolate milk in this motherfucker. Because it's so good. <laughs> yeah, you're like... It, 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 they're basically just, like, that's the water they use to clean out the chocolate milk yeah. machines. They're just like, well, it's, like, gray water, but we can still bottle this. It's totally fine. This shit is delicious. That's <laughs> all I buy. Shout out to Nestle. Give me a sponsorship for exactly. some water. Get yeah, me hooked up. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I just, I just can't go that bottled water route. I'm still a crunch dirty hippie like deep down inside i'm like nah i'm gonna stick with my nalgene over here and drink my filter tap water filter tap water i mean i i tried it like i had a filter i had a I had a filter on my faucet and then a filtered water pitcher okay so like one of those brita action things yeah but the convenience of bottled water is unmatched and for three fucking bucks for 32 Take my shit. No, I, I, I can I can completely understand that. My struggle is I should actually drink some water. Like that's the like hands down. It's like wake up, cup of coffee, get home from my run, cup of coffee, get to work, several cups of coffee. It's like basically I don't have blood anymore. It's alcohol and caffeine, and that's that's exactly how I function. It's like all right, cool. That's weird because you got me on the drink in the what forty eight ounces a day. Yeah, well, because it's like during the summertime, uh, like well. I go through phases of trying to be healthy and then I realize that I'm going to die anyway. And then I'm like, I, I really want to enjoy my life and that's that's how I intend to do it. <laughs> like, I, think, I don't want to say their name, but um, our main boss, our boss's boss, mm. was, I saw him at lunchroom one day and he's like, what are you eating, Gino? And I had like Aloha Grill or something, right? Yeah, yeah. Delicious. And yeah. And he's like, I was like, what do you got? And he's like, oh, you know, gonna die on happy eating these salads. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you're like, no, I, I'm sorry, man. I'm that. Like, so what's funny is my body actually, like, I'm, I, I'm pretty self-aware of actually what I need. And I get some, like, mad cravings for salad. And I'll end up, like, just eating, like, bags of salad for no reason. Like, my body will be like, hey, you know those green things? You should have been eating these for, like, a month. And now we're just going to lay it on thick and just eat all of this. But my <laughs> wife tr- does try very hard to make sure that I don't die young. So, uh, like, if we eat super healthy at home. But then when she's gone, I'm like, so where can I get all of the ribs? Like, how that's... Does, how does your body feel when you go through those different phases? Is there... <clears throat> when you're eating clean, do your, does your body feel better? Like, oh, yeah. when you're running and doing activity? Exactly. No, and that's... So, like... I, I do significantly, so I go through a couple different changes. So when I actually started going back to working out and my runs in the morning are not single digit degrees outside <laughs> kind of runs. So mm-hmm. when I can actually do those things, 
there's a huge change in my mood. Like, I don't have as many mood swings. Like, I'm more up than I am down. Mm -hmm. And uh, I definitely can wake up easier. I don't need as much coffee. I'm more prone to drink water because I'm super dehydrated from running my nonsense out. But that's like 100%. Like, I do feel better. I just don't care. So that's... (laughs) well, And it's like my wife and I both have this conversation where it's like... So she has MS, and, like, one of the main things they're like, Don't, you have to cut out alcohol. And my wife is a young woman, and we're both like, why would I cut this out? Like, I know, like, everyone has their issues, blah, 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 whatever. But I'm like, I, this is something we enjoy doing, and it's a center point of our social interactions. Mm-hmm. No. I'm not going to cut this out. I don't care if it's not going to, like... If, if you told me I was going to take 10 years off of my life, I'm not 100% certain that I would still stop. Like, that's... Yeah, like, I, I tell this shit to Courtney all the time. Like, I don't even want to live to be 60. Yeah, like, I've you look at 60-year-olds, and most of them look fucking miserable. Yeah. I don't, like, if I could retire, like, super early and change that and, like, be super active at that point, I feel like that'd be so advantageous. But... Well, you can. You just gotta hit the lotto or some shit. Exactly. <laughs> or get hit by a car. Uh, <laughs> Wake up every day hoping. Exactly. Come on, Mercedes. Please tell me you got a one mil policy. Please mow my ass down. Um, you break a leg. <laughs> exactly. I'm trying to be crippled. Uh, but it, it, it's stuff along those lines where I'm just like, I, I'm not interested in doing that. Like, that's just not, like, I'm why? You. I'm why? And, like, I'm already breaking as it is. Like, it's I, my one favorite hobby is backpacking. And, like, some days when I'm out there, I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, okay, I did 15 miles or I did 20 miles a day. I hurt. How old are you now? I'm 32. I turned 32 on Thursday. Oh, dope. <laughs> um, and so um, I don't know if you remember, but I've been having an issue with this knee. You remember? Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. Um, remember the Ben Greenfield guy I told you about? Yeah, the yeah. The one that got stem cells in his dick that yeah. lives here. Yeah. He's a huge, um, he has these pills called, uh, this company called Keon. Okay. K-I-O-N. And, like, he's really interesting to me. I like him. I like to listen to him a lot. Yeah. And I've, like, even tweeted to him. And he tweeted back, which is cool as fuck, because he's, like, a big, big... Yeah, you're like, all right, d- you're like, do you really have time to respond to me? It's and, cool if you don't, I understand. Right. But and, it's like, oh, you hit me up. This is still awesome about him. He's actually looking for a co-host for a podcast, but... And you're like, <laughs> I don't, hey, I don't qualify. I don't know that much about the health <laughs> industry to be on his level. But you anyway... You get red. I took his, um... I ordered his Keon pills. Yeah. Um, and I, as you can tell, I've been plumping up a little bit. <laughs> it's winter time. We're hibernating. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but those Keon pills, man, like, yeah. since I started taking them, my knee don't hurt no more. I, I started taking those and just vitamin D. Huh. Which is not dick for the internet fucking haters. It's actually. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, this is legit. Vitamin D, it at Walgreens. <laughs> yeah. Amazon, bro. Come on. Uh, I support, I support the autonomy. <laughs> exactly. You're like, send that drone bitch to my house. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> like a parks and rec. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, so good. So, I mean, taking those, like, because I haven't started eating better yet. Yeah. I tried, like. Jeanette, if you listen to this, <laughs> we were supposed to start like eating better on the first together and working out. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And I did for like two weeks. And I was like, I want a Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> Dude, I totally, yeah, no, I, I totally get that. I basically, so it's funny. So like, it, and also like you got to take my person, like I'm a thin human being. Yeah. But so like other people like stress eat and stuff like that. When I get stressed out, I don't eat anything. And that's, like, I can't consume food. Like, it just, like, well, that's what part of the reason why I stay as skinny as I am. Because it's, like, oh, I spent all day being stressed out and I don't want to eat unless mm-hmm. I've worked out. And then when I work out, or like, I only eat enough to make myself full. Mm-hmm. And that's not conscious by any means. It's just, like, how I've always functioned. And, like, I always used to think it was, like, super funny. Like, people would be like, oh, like, what do you do for diet? And, like, when I was younger, they're just like, you know what I want to do? I eat Pop-Tarts. And Eggo waffles <laughs> and drink a bunch of water because I can't afford anything else. <laughs> and they're like, what? Like, I, like, I love some people are like, oh, do intermittent fasting. I'm like, mm. that's just called my regular diet. Yeah. Like, like, I don't eat breakfast. And it's not because I don't want to. It's because I'm, I'm not interested. Mm-hmm. Like, I love breakfast foods. Like, don't get me wrong. I would eat breakfast for every single meal mm. if I had time. But I'm, I'm not interested in doing that. That's just not how I function. And then, like, I load on all these calories when I go backpacking. It's, like, super funny. Like, I basically don't eat 
now and then I go backpacking burn all these calories and then I eat this brick of just like random ass food <laughs> and then I'm like oh my god this is what full feels like this is dope I'm gonna blow your mind right now yeah um, me and my friend Ryan two weeks ago we went out to Northern Quest for the we just wanted a buffet it was like one yeah until three, they do breakfast food with the brunch mixed in. Oh, snap. I fucked up some French toast <laughs> and prime rib at the same time. You're like, <laughs> greatest moment ever. I never had French toast and prime rib, goddammit, <laughs> but it was delicious. You're like, it's a pairing and made in heaven. It was like thirteen ninety five. <laughs> Damn. That is, that's not a bad call. I, you, I won't judge you for that. That's you might have legit. to go out there, bro. I, I, I might have to experience you don't, this. You don't want to make it. No. It's there for you. Yeah, I'm not interested in doing that. Well, like, it's funny. So, like, I had never had... Like, so I've traveled a lot over the U.S. My parents used to take us on road trips all over the place. Mm -hmm. And I used to be the pickiest goddamn eater. Like, peanut butter sandwiches with just peanut butter had to be, like, wheat bread. Couldn't be white. I thought it was gross. Yuck. But, no, it, yeah, it's... So I had this terrible thing. And then, like, when my parents started doing these road trips, they'd, my mom would be like... I remember specifically, I don't remember where we were going. But we got into my mom's good old, no, I think it was like a 97 Ford Windstar. And we get <laughs> into this. Yeah, exactly. And she <laughs> she looks at us. So I've got two younger brothers. We're all packed in there with all of our crap. And she looks at all of us. She goes, we're driving for the next some odd hours, which I, I, I have to imagine is anywhere between 10 and 20 hours because, you mm. know, time is not a thing back then. Mm -hmm. And she's like, whatever we have in the car is all you're going to eat. And I just remember being like, I'm going to starve. It's the worst <laughs> day of my life. I can't, I know, I don't even know what I'm going to do. And uh, from that point on, I just basically started eating everything and anything. And now I right. love chicken fried steak because it's amazing. Ugh. Oh, it's so good. That's with, Sometimes. No, Sometimes. that all the time with a good brown gravy with like actual chunks in it. And it's like, oh, it's, it's on point. I'm not a fan of gravy. Well, you know, we all make poor choices. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I like I, I've I've eaten some insane foods over the years, and it's it's been awesome. But I eat just about anything anymore, and it's like when my wife was like, "Oh, we're gonna become vegans," I'm like, "Or vegetarians," I'm like, "All right, that sounds fine." But when you're not around, I'm going to eat six dead animals. So <laughs> <laughs> at least you tell her about it. Hey, yeah, and it's just like this is what's gonna happen. It's like when we uh, when I used to describe my my Palomo side Thanksgivings uh, to her, it was like, "Hey." There's so many of us, we have to find new animals to kill to put on the plate because, you know, turkey isn't enough. You got to have a couple chickens on there because someone had to make them. You have to have ham. Someone slaughtered some roadkill. Mm -hmm. You know, there's six, seven other things. The rice. So I learned this. I thought my you rice at Thanksgiving. Um, well, it's, it, yes, we do, uh, because it's a special Paloma family rice. So I thought it was brown rice, like legit, like brown rice. Mm -hmm. I learned that it is white rice soaked in soy sauce and then cooked with bacon. Like I know that I know that there was <laughs> bacon in it. Christ. So there's bacon in it, but it's like <laughs> chopped up. But they also use like a little bit of bacon fat in it. So basically, it is the unhealthiest carb I've ever seen. It's bacon rice. <laughs> yeah, it is bacon <laughs> rice soy with soy sauce. <laughs> so it's like, hey, did you need all of that sodium? Because right. you sure did. You sure did. There is literally nothing healthy about it. But I will eat the nonsense out of that. When, like when we went back for Thanksgiving this past year, I was like, well. How much of this can I shove in a to-go box? Did your I'm, wife eat any? She ate some things, but she was just like, you guys are the weirdest. <laughs> like, I don't understand this at all. I'm just going to have a beer and stand off to the side because there's too many people here. <laughs> so, but it, it was pretty funny because I, I'm, those are, those Thanksgivings were like the best because it's like, oh my God, I'm going to eat all of this and none of it is good for me. So... <laughs> But well, good thing you still look like you weigh like 120. Uh, just wait till I hit 40, and that's when my my uh, what my digestive or whatever it's called metabolism yeah. is just going to shut down and I, retire. I used to be your skinny, right? like till 27, and then I just was just, like, mm. let me eat this Taco Bell, and then my I looked down and I was like, oh. Shouldn't have ate that taco. Yeah, <laughs> I can now see that Taco yeah. Bell. It has imprinted its logo on me. It now owns me. But no, I I totally understand that. But like I I have to stay active. I also get super bored. So that's yeah. like a hundred percent of like I spend my summer. Like my wife's like, oh, like we're gonna relax at the lake, and I'm like, well, I'm gonna walk around it, like the whole lake. That sounds great, and then I'll be back. 
and then I'm gonna fall asleep for a couple days. So that'll be cool. See, I'm 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 with you in that regard. Like when I go, like anytime I've gone on vacation, like to Hawaii. Yeah. I never just lay on the beach. Let's go find something. Let's. I would we gotta with explore, that. bro. Yeah, man. There's so many things you gotta do, and I'm one of those people who loves to know people, like for no <laughs> other reason. Like I am invested in like, like when someone, oh, like what is it? Like all of the staff of the Flying Goat. I know them all. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah and it's like, I, why am I invested in their lives? I have no idea. Outside of the fact that I see them all the time and they're great people, but they're, like other people go there all the time and know none of those people's names and that's fine do like, they know your name they do unfortunately because like cheers <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> well it's also the guys that like, hang out at the bar like who are there even more often than i am and they're like oh you're back and i'm like yeah i just saw you yesterday <laughs> are Damn. you going there tonight no well uh, maybe depends on what time we finish <laughs> exactly I'm like how badly do i want to show up super late at home when my wife's been parenting my kids all day um it's just like i don't want to be in that much trouble don't eh, push no. it she might listen to this it, no. <laughs> that, that would mean she'd have to find it and uh, actually pay attention to what happens on my facebook which i don't post anything right. unless it's attached to my instagram I don't, I don't even do that God. i just do you know there are certain people that want to see my kids grow up and it clearly isn't me but no. i had to unfriend most of the people at work that had asked me like which were very few anyway but yeah um the ones that requested i was like i can't <laughs> you're you like, can't no. you can't listen to this no no you're, you're not allowed so <laughs> this doesn't make any money so exactly let's not fuck up my other money yeah yeah for real <laughs> i'm not trying to get canned over here it's totally fine right but um yeah no no i I use Facebook in such a limited fashion and I actually had totally forgotten. So I have two Facebooks, one for my former students and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. so when I was a teacher, I well, wanted you have three technically cause one for work. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. That thing that's garbage. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I had those two set up and uh, like, I totally had forgotten about the one with all my students on it. Cause I didn't transfer like a bunch of them friended the other one. Once I left the school and they graduated, they're like, Oh, like TJ is still our friend. I'm like, Oh, all right. But they, um, yeah, they went ahead and like, so like I had to check and I was like, Holy crap. I haven't checked this thing in forever. And there's like comments and stuff. Oh, but I haven't checked it since my birthday. I bet a bunch of people posted on there and I have not looked at that. Yeah. Just delete uh, the other one. Yeah, I don't know. I, that means I have to care enough to log into it and do that. That's, yeah. <laughs> like, that's like six more steps than I want to do. It's like, oh, like, did I really need to click this far? And honestly, I can only switch between accounts directly on Messenger. I have not learned how to do that on Facebook. So I have to enter Messenger and then go back in. And so <laughs> TJ, you sound like you're fucking 60 already. <laughs> I know, I know. But then the other thing is, like, I'm tech support at work. So that's, like, right. it's this wild contradiction of, like, I, am I too apathetic to handle my own crap? <laughs> but I will happily fix all of your computers. And that's the same thing at work, where it's like, oh, like, man, I'm running my own tech problems. Can't figure it out. Yeah. Find it on someone else's computer. Oh, dude, I can totally fix this. And I'm like, why am I so dumb with my own stuff? <laughs> like it's like just the worst like I can't figure it out but I think it's just apathy I think that's really what that boils down to <laughs> I wish I was more proactive it's like hey we want to promote you because you're doing great stuff yeah that but never I, I'm so tired <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to do that but no I didn't mean, yeah no there's all the so many personality quirks but it is what it is yeah someone learned to love me <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need is one. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I just got to keep her around. Uh, <laughs> please don't murder me, Galena. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Did you have anything uh, uh, else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're going yeah. to switch and we're going to... I'm down for We're going to entertain the internet right now. Dope. I'm excited about this. So, what do you got? I got you on this train a while ago. Okay. And I need to know if you're still on it. Oh, is this, are we talking about Flat Earth? We are getting there. God damn it. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so many memes. So, so many memes. Many. Well, so, what are your thoughts? Is the Earth as God? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, all right, are we going to go off the edge here? I just can't do it. I can't be a Flat Earther. There's, there's just nothing there for me, and... Well, what there's there's even a couple articles about flat earth it's like the same thing with anti-vaxxers where it's like <laughs> you went ahead we did a study we tried to figure it out and we only proved ourselves wrong so and like i just i have to go with the earth is round you can't 
And it, You've it never is. seen it. It is. I'm not gonna say it's flat, but I, I still, I'm still on the I don't know train. Yeah. No, I got, I gotta go the, I gotta go the round to earth route. Oh. That's, that's, that's what I'm buying. That's when it's being sold. But it was sold by a, a molester. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, society's cool with it these days, right? You know what I'm talking about? I think so. The grass? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Prove it. Um, but <laughs> Prove it. That's what they've been saying to him for the round earth. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, we well we gotta we just gotta wait till some R. Kelly shit happens and we'll be fine with that. But it's, it's he's just gonna get arrested and go back to his cult. Alright, so you're fully on that it's round now. I, I have you, to I had you question it. You did. You did for some time. I had to do a ton of research and it was like in all honesty the last time i did that much research was like studying russian history which didn't do me any favors i am like that, that that's the real question how is russia still a country with the amount of times that it just like genocides its own people like that doesn't make any sense to me that's because they motherfuckers know don't question nothing <laughs> Dude, they do all the time and then they're like well you didn't question enough or you didn't question at all so we're just gonna murder a bunch yeah. of you it's like I, yeah that country just blows my well, mind that's funny because um you you know who Khabib is, the UFC fighter? No, I don't. <laughs> God damn it, TJ. All right, so Khabib, he's the one that beat, Con you know, Conor McGregor. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yes, 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 yes. His ass. Okay. Yeah. So, like, when Conor was talking shit to him, like, pretty fight, he's like, come on, say fuck Russia, because they, because Khabib's not from Russia, he's from, like, Kazakhstan, which is yeah, just yeah, outside. Yeah. Um, but Russia dominates them. Yeah. It, they, they, <laughs> it's Russia. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Under a different name. Um, yeah. And, like, his dad got in trouble for some shit and put in, like, I guess, according to Connor, it was like, yeah. fuck you to his family. So now, like, for Khabib to be able to come over and fight, like, he's like, come on, talk about fucking Putin, talk about Putin. Khabib would just look at him. No. Shake his head. No, nope. nothing. He's like, I'm, I'm not trying to get, <laughs> yeah. trying to get. Um, and that motherfucker wrestles bears. Yeah, and you're like, nah, <laughs> I'm not gonna run that train. That's no, that's no good. No, that place is crazy, man. Like, honestly, Russia is like the most insane thing I've ever seen in my entire life because like just the way they function like i'm like i don't understand like even like in the 90s they had like weird soviet like you can only get toilet paper on thursdays and you're like you get half a roll and we gotta ration this shit out i'm like what the fuck is happening over here like yeah. this doesn't make any sense and like my, like my well you know russia took a lot of the nazis after world war ii well yeah someone had to take them in and it's the cold well, we did too yeah, but we took the smart ones. So that's... <laughs> is, yeah. there, is there such a thing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. They had some pretty insane weapons, so I, th I think so. Um, well, yeah. And, well, that's also super... Like, that's a whole different other... Let's get into it. Well... Let's do it. <laughs> well, like, so it's funny, because, like, you hear about all the, like, Mexicans coming over the border, mm -hmm. like, that all that whole... All that hate all around, all along those lines. Mm -hmm. One of the other biggest things is, like, Asian country... Uh, Asian nationals coming in through the Mexican border because they can enter illegally and they're actually a huge portion of that trafficking is Asian yeah the, yeah is Asian countries coming in legally to South American countries and then funneling up through the border like because they have more money they can be able to do it and then they get into America and they're they're able to do higher end jobs because they got educated in China and right. Japan and they're able to make that move and that's awesome for them but it's hilarious because we focus on this like Mexican piece of things mm. and I'm like why? There is is it just because these people make more money and wh whatever you're like that you don't give a shit about this population well, like it, I, treading lightly here yeah just by stereotype there's yeah. more crime involved with so like oh yeah when you no, say no, minorities okay. right yeah you wouldn't think of Asian community not in California they basically Anywhere. run that bitch but you just say I'll fuck the minorities. Yeah, you don't you're think not, Asian. Yeah, yeah you you're don't think Asian. blacks or Mexicans. Yeah, that's a hundred percent of what you're looking at, but and, and which is just another whole. And when they say we're coming after illegal immigrants, you're not thinking Asians. No, no. We and, could go down the fucking wax and nail spa down here. I guarantee none of them motherfuckers. <laughs> like, <laughs> they haven't even had a birth birth certificate. They're like fucking lost. Right. But no, along those lines, like we had tons of. Uh, of Nazis actually crossing the border after World War II coming in that way, like coming in through... Middle. So, <laughs> full circle. Yeah, yeah, back we're, we're going to the, do this thing. Back to NASA. Here. Exactly. So do you know who Alex Jones is? I don't. Okay, so... Um, I'm clearly the most uneducated person we've had. <laughs> no, it's just, this is just pop culture stuff. Yeah. Um, so he... 
He's a millionaire. Yeah. Um, he has this website called Infowars.com. He's the oh, first, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the first person banned from Twitter. Yes. Banned okay. from YouTube. I do. Okay. I he do know the who Sandy Hook killings were. Yeah. Yeah. He is an awful person. Um, I watched his four-hour podcast that he did with Rogan over the weekend. Oh, the one where he calls himself a retard? No, this is brand new. Okay. Okay. Um, he may have called himself a retard. Yeah, because I saw that plastered all over the place. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The dark net was like, he called himself oh, a Oh, don't retard. say you go on the dark net. <laughs> don't say you go on the dark net. <laughs> My apologies. It's the good net. It's blue collar work net. All right. Especially with, with your work computer. <laughs> exactly. Please don't touch it. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so they were talking about how, like, uh, the leader of NASA was a fucking Nazi. I, 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 I can't say that. This that is 100% is... confirmed. Yeah, and... That's fine. And like That's they, not fine. Like, what are you supposed to do with that information? Think of all the propaganda that the Nazis gave out. Yeah, that's... So, I think you have to compare... Like, I, I'm not I'm not saying this, like, that the, the Nazi thing is good <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. But it's more of, like, a bunch of those scientists were actually, like, held against their will in a lot of different ways. Like, a lot of those guys were. Like, it wasn't like they had a choice. True. Like you got stuck, you either do this or your family dies, kind of situation. Like that, that is a huge portion. Of it. I know a bunch of them volunteered. Mm-hmm. I know that's a, like I know that there's both sides of that coin, but I think along those same lines, like you got to realize, like Goebbels' propaganda portion is very separate from anyone doing science. Like those are two separate departments. It's not like, like, PSAs aren't coming out of NASA all the time. Like that's not how this is functioning. Not anymore. Not anymore. But so let me let me, we also let me don't have an arms race anymore. So Alex Jones, <laughs> the internet is gonna be like, who is this, this motherfucking <laughs> Gino? He was talking about Andrew Yang. Now he's talking about fucking Alex Jones. Um, We're trans spending. So they had space and they time had here. Eddie Bravo on with them. You know who Eddie Bravo is. No, I don't recognize. So that. if you watch the Rogan podcast, you would see him occasionally. Well, I'll have to educate friend. myself. He's really big on flat Earth, and now he's on Space is Fake, which. Whole nother ball game, but uh, all right. <laughs> um, he was talking about how the moon landing was fake, and Alex Jones was like, "I know astronauts. I met them. The footage is fake because they couldn't show it. They can't film it on the moon because of the radiation." What do you think about that? I, th- I would have to do my homework. Did they land on the moon, TJ? I believe that they did. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> Like China's up there right now on the dark side with a fucking rover. They didn't send people up there. Well, yeah, because there's... Chinese people do anything. (laughs) Yeah, I've seen their game shows. Shit's out of control. It's like, they're basically committing murder on live TV. You're like, why did you choose to do that? That's not even made of foam, and you're getting beat to death with it. And that dude's dressed in a furry costume. I don't even know what's happening right now. I, I don't I don't know. Like I I'd have to do my homework. Like the radiation thing kind of blows my mind. Like I I would have to know more about that and how that would actually So they also said like um Cause like, most international flights now are at night because flying is bad because like the atmosphere is a magnifying glass onto the plane up that high and you like it's like getting like 400 x-rays in a day flying. Dope. It's terrible for you. So we should fly more often. Is According that? to Alex Jones, who you say is an idiot. Hey, no, he said I'm retarded. That's, <laughs> he that, did say that. <laughs> All right, so here, I looked it up. So it was uh, Werner von Braun yep. was a member of the Nazi party and an SS officer and surrendered to the Americans along with other key leaders. This is all Wikipedia. No, this is Nazi. Or this is NASA's fucking site. Uh, he lived till 1977. One of the most important rocket developers and champions of space exploration in the 20th century. Uh, blah, blah, blah. He became... <laughs> he became uh, enamored with the possibility of space exploration by reading the work of science fiction authors. <laughs> well, okay. You can't get too hung up on that because... Like, you gotta think about Scientology and... Uh, what's his name? Oh, shit. Tom Cruise? Ron, no, and... Uh, what is it? L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah. That's, yeah. He is a science fiction novelist. Like, the whole premise of mm-hmm. Scientology was based off of a bet to see who could make more money. Person making up a, a religion or a surgeon. And he made way more money. He won that bet. Oh, yeah. It's based on nothing except for a giant-ass pyramid scheme that gets tax breaks. <laughs> like, it's <laughs> fucking garbage. It's like, oh, God. It's Catholicism with more steps. Mm. Like, it's it's the worst. And with less 
public raping. Let me let me ask you your opinion on religion. Yeah. Is there a God? No. Why? Because it's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Elaborate, TJ. Yeah, no, I get you. So I, I don't know. So I was Catholic for a very long time. My parents did an awesome thing, which ruined several months of my existence because I had to read the Bible, and it was the worst. It's a great work of fiction. That's going to piss everyone off. But um, my parents, so I was a, I was an altar boy. No, none of those questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> didn't happen. Not part of my life. So, but... I had to come up with an argument for why I didn't want to go to church anymore. Mm -hmm. And it had to be based on research. And so I did all of this. I read the stupid, I read the Bible and I was like, I'm reading this thing and nothing's coming to me. And I'm like, I'm trying so hard and I have never done anything that hard at that point in my life. I was like, why am I doing this? This book is so long. I hate reading. I don't even read for school. Why am I doing this? And Let me interject one quick second. Yeah. Do you know Anthony Jeselnik? Yeah. <laughs> his joke when his grandma's like, did you read your Bible? Yes, grandma. I wish it was long. <laughs> <laughs> you just made me think of that. Keep going. Sorry. No, of course. <laughs> and so I read the whole stupid Bible. I'm trying to figure it out. And I read this book. I can't remember who the author is, but I'm pretty positive it's called Joshua. And it's like a modern day retelling of like... Jesus. This is a story in the Bible. No, this is a separate book okay. written as like a fiction about Jesus. Okay. So it, and I read this thing and it tells me why I don't need to go to church. It because in the entire Bible, it doesn't tell you you have to go to church. Your place of worship is wherever you you find God. I've never read the Bible. This is news to me. This is great. <laughs> yeah. No, it was an <laughs> awesome argument because my friend was like, all right, dope. You argued it effectively. And I'm like, oh my God. Why didn't I think of this years ago? <laughs> I've been trying to get out of going this boring hour of my life, my entire goddamn existence. But it was like, it was so funny because like I did that. And then my brother was also, also an altar server and he was he's, uh, two years younger than me. And he was just like, oh, I'm going to use that argument. And my parents were like, nah, it's been used. <laughs> they were like, damn it. But they let him off the hook too. But it was funny because I, like, I was like, oh, sweet. Like, I don't have to admit that I don't believe in God anymore. All I have to do is find a way around god's loopholes and catholic <laughs> structure and i i found it but it took reading an entire bible and then not finding the answer and then finding it in some garbage book that someone handed me and like, <laughs> son of a but no it totally yeah no i i, I choose to I, I don't like to be atheist because that sounds so definitive like agnostic sounds like a better way to go like that's it's a cop out on my own part because i should be definitive but uh, i'm not catholic anymore i just don't choose to do any of that like the worst I've ever pissed a religious person off before was describing religion as magazine subscriptions. <laughs> and some of them are just free and thrown on your doorstep. So True. it, 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 it oh God, I, I swear he would have punched me, but it, <laughs> I was just like so mad about the whole situation. Someone was trying to convert me and I was like, dude, we've been over this. This is not how I roll. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do this. And I'm going to insult you on purpose. If you keep pushing the issue. <laughs> so stop trying to convert me because I'm not buying it. But yeah, your magazine subscriptions should have come with cookies. But um, <laughs> Girl Scouts are better salesmen. But no, I, I just, I just don't see it. Like, and I, I don't want to be that definitive. Like, I enjoy the wonder of creation in the fact that nature is a beautiful thing. And if that's all random, then that's amazing. But that's, I'm okay with that. So let me ask you this. So. I don't. I don't believe either. Yeah. I, don't, I don't subscribe. I did. Uh, ha I allowed some Mormons to come in my house a couple of weeks ago. And I was nice to them and I let them do their spiel. But then I'd ask them questions back, and they would be like, "Well, that's God." I, I hate the excuse of when you can't explain something, that's just because God. Yeah. Mm. I'm gonna yeah. call bullshit on that. But yeah, if someone's a dick, that doesn't mean it's God. That right. person's just a dick. So I was having a discussion. I think it was last week with uh, my neighbor at work. Okay. You, you know who I'm yeah. talking to. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and I was like, I don't believe. And he's like, yeah, you do. I was like, no, I, I really don't. He's like, but you're a nice person. Debatable by yeah, people. You're like, people listening to this will be like, uh, you're like I've seen this motherfucker do some shit. This dude has some really subpars on who he considers to be nice. Right, but I do, <laughs> I, I do, do nice things now, right? Like, I, I, uh, like at work, right? When there's leftover food, I'm taking that to Union Gospel Mission. Let the homeless people eat our leftover shit, whatever. Feed yeah. them. Um, I've done Blessings Under the Bridge. Uh, I do the Big Brothers Big Sisters program. 
Um, right. So, and that's just me. Yeah, you're like, hugely active. I just want to be nice. Like, yeah. I just want to give back. And he's like, you do that because you believe in a higher power. And I said, no, I don't. And he goes, then why do you do it? And I go, because I believe in me. And I am here because I'm special in my own right. Mm. I don't need okay. to believe that I'm doing something for somebody else. I can do it for my fucking self, right? Yeah. And I feel like when you believe in religion, you take away from yourself. What do you think? Well, so, I, like, it's kind of funny that you bring it up in that fashion in terms of believing in yourself and, like, the, the power of you. Right. Um, I find that to be interesting just on the basis. So, like, when I really want to be an asshole to people of religion and, like, really frustrate the shit out of them, mm-hmm. I normally bring up the analogy of, like, to or ask the question... I need you to prove that I exist without making physical contact with me. And you can't. Mm-hmm. Like, there is no argument for that because there is no way for to prove that the, that we're even sitting in this room, that there's any conversation going on. And then I always bring it back to that horrible Matrix reference where it's like, oh, nope, everybody's just a brain in a jar <laughs> and I just exist. And so, like, I, I get frustrated because, like, when that situation happens, I default on the fact where it's like, no, like, this is my consciousness punishing me like that's what's happening (laughs) i'm doing these things so if i do something good then maybe that'll bring me some kind of joy or i'll feel better about myself but it's super selfish like that's 100 percent of how i perceive it Mm -hmm. like not saying anything against you but it's like no no no. but i'm like okay like i need to feel good so i am going to go do this like it's funny because like on that same wavelength like my my wife and I are way more prone to do something for animals than we are for another human being. Me too. And that's I'm like a hundred. Like I clearly have way too many animals. That is not people. Um, <laughs> I'm not collecting bodies in my basement. Some people should. But um, no, it, it's it's that whole concept where you're like, all right, how much of this is just selfish do goodery versus am I am I actually doing this? F- to do something is it, right. is it, it am i actually trying to promote something better out there in the world or something along those lines right like the like you're talking about like people that are like brag about them on social media yeah. oh look at me here's a picture of me feeding homeless yeah. or i gave a check to this chair exactly right. and it, it, you know there there is some showboatermanship about that but like i don't know like you you have to you have to do certain things and like i just find it funny because the people that i've met in the most recent years of my life it's it's been more interesting to see it's like it is more that show bonermanship or mm-hmm. it the idea of doing thing good things good in the world is very short sighted like yeah. it's like i'm gonna make i'm gonna do this because mm-hmm. it's gonna do something good for that person today and mm-hmm. i I understand that there is plenty of value there, but I'm like i I feel like there's so much more long game stuff, but there's also a lot of frustration because you know you want to do good, but then you watch systemic organizations just fail repeatedly what is systemic so like on on it like like the goodwill okay majority of their funds do not go back to people that they're supposed to be supporting mm-hmm. a lot of it is infrastructure the ceo of goodwill things along those lines like there isn't oh like they do a marginal amount of good mm-hmm. i choose to try not to don- donate to them uh, except when it's like crazy convenient and i don't want to go and <laughs> i'm being lazy and a capitalist and i'm like eh, <laughs> you're just gonna take this crap yeah you can throw away half of it later um but it's it's just one of those things where you're like you watch some good being done and then on the flip side you're like no this is just generally awful like you're yeah. just not benefiting the people that you should be i know people need to get paid to do jobs and i think that's 100 percent. but there's a lot of that where i'm like this is just kind of gross mm-hmm. like i don't want to give you stuff because none of this is going to benefit anyone like a hipster is going to buy my shit in like a week mm-hmm. like that's that's not going to do anyone any good like there's plenty of homeless people that could easily use that well shit don't mormons have to give like 10 percent of their income to their church yeah it's but fucking so crazy well and that's what's crazy is salt lake city has like no so salt lake city utah mm-hmm. has no homeless person issue because they house all those people mm-hmm. because the community there and the mormon church decided that they were going to take control of the situation create free housing do job training and rehab all in the same facility and as long as you commit to the rehab and the job training you can live there and the religion no that's actually not a portion of it it's literally just we want you off the street because our city is beautiful and i I don't know if you've ever been to salt Mm -hmm. lake it's goddamn gorgeous it is like yes it it is in the middle of fucking nowhere and it's 
the shithole. It's like Las Vegas. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> it's an oasis, but it is a salt lake. It's gross. Um, I don't want to swim in that shit at all. Um, unless you're going to do a salt scrub, and you're still going to be terrible. But it, it, they did so much, but they put all that money and that time and that infrastructure, but it took a whole community to come to terms with that. Yeah. But community the, or cult? I feel, I feel, in that scenario, I do feel like it's community. Like, okay. they, they made that decision to do that together. Yes. Do they have some, like, weird tendencies to just, like, baptize down all lines? And that's super fucking weird to me. Because <laughs> I'm probably a Mormon and I didn't even know it. But <laughs> I, I'm just, it's like one of those weird things where I'm just like, this is, like, that's fine. But they, like, I, I did used to think very poorly of that. I, I, like you think cult mentality you do all that kind of thing but actually like, going to the city actually seeing what they do how much they've actually been able to turn their religion into this focal point to better a community without ramming Mormonism down through everyone's throats which is great to better your community but why do you have to drag religion into it why do you have to do it because you're living for a higher power like why can't you just be a fucking good community because people have to explain things away you have to. Like, right. So that's, and that's fine. That's, but that's not believing in yourself, right? You're no. not good enough. You got to believe in something higher. Just fucked up. It's been a crutch. Uh, well, I, I don't even want to say it's a crutch. It's been a part of human society for eons. Like, we've constantly done this. And well, I, I, I saw this thing that um, the reason it went to one god versus, like, the Greek gods where there was a god for everything, yeah. god of love, god of this, was because the gods interjected in your life too much. You had to do this for this god like yeah. the god of love like, god you damn do it this. I only have so many chickens I can't sacrifice them right. all so then they went to one god that gives you free will and they don't gotta be involved in your life <laughs> yeah, that's just entrepreneurship so <laughs> right <laughs> get that money exactly hey if you focus on one then you just have a bunch of priests and they get lit up with cash and you're good <laughs> you're like hey do I have a drinking problem yeah I do now I do like that like uh, what was I going I forgot. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. But it, yeah, no, I I find it to be interesting, oh, but I but there's like a whole flip side of that whole homeless community thing where it's like here in Spokane, ours is super bad. Yep. And it doesn't make any goddamn well, it does make sense because there is so much support for that community up here. But it gets so goddamn cold. Oh yeah. And it's like well, we have lots of places for them to go. No, and I totally understand that, but they we're getting to the point where but it's getting don't. overrun. Yeah. Like, Tent City got fucking moved. Yeah, and it, it I, it's just interesting because, like, I know there's some of those people that are truly down on their luck. I just, like, it makes me think of other examples in, like, California where there are people who actively are homeless. Like, they just don't have a home. They but they prefer it. Yeah, they yeah. prefer it. And I'm like, but you can't live off of this dime. Like, that's not cool with me in any way, shape, or form because you're just actively choosing, like, you're a an able-bodied sane human being who has the capability to contribute but you're choosing not to right and there's a difference with like if if that person chooses not to even use any like welfare mm -hmm. or social security then that's awesome like i'm like sweet i still consider you to be a contributing member of society because you are trying to like you're getting money in some fashion like if panhandling is your thing then that's sweet mm -hmm. if people are going to give you money it's great for them having a conscience i, I like it's like awesome for you but if you're just going to mooch off the system of, like, taxpayer dollars being used, I, I feel like that's... You can't. Like, that's... Stealing. Yeah. That, <laughs> that is theft. I should be able to hunt you. Man, it's the oh. most dangerous game. Oh. No, um, that's a joke. Get so, over it. So, back to the religion thing. So... Yeah. Um, the thing about it like this, right? Like, animals. Yeah. Because you like animals. I love animals. Yeah. Uh, they just know shit, right? Look at your look at your dog, right? Like you take it from a puppy from its mom. Yeah. At what six weeks? Let's say. Yeah. Never in it's a single dog by itself at your house. It knows shit. It's gonna lift its leg to pee. It's gonna smell other shit. It's gonna know what to bark at. It's gonna be fucking territorial. Yeah. They're not thinking about fucking God. <laughs> this is true, but they don't also have the cognitive abilities to be doing things along those lines. So but think about it: if there's a fucking God that wants you to worship it. Because he's fucking conceited than a motherfucker, right? <laughs> he's gonna put it in everything. Theoretically, right. theoretically, but so you know, I can't. You know, that's just, yeah. Is that not the most conceited shit? If you think about it, right? Go to my fucking house and talk about me only good 
and praise me and pay for me. I don't know. If you think about... That's like, the most conceited shit I've ever heard in my I life. I know, but if you think about early, uh, like, Revelations kind of preachers who are like, uh, the crimson and fire of the hell is going to come and get you and you're going to... It's, like, awful and God <laughs> is a spiteful God. I don't know. It's, like, all of that just, like... I don't... It's just a waste. Like, it makes me tired. <laughs> and it's, it's one of those things where I'm, like... It's funny because it's, like, so I... I I have anxiety, but I also have, like, the craziest of guilty consciences, like, all the time. Like, I don't even have to do anything wrong, and I already feel bad about it. I like, I'm like... It's called being white. No, it's called being Catholic. <laughs> and it's like, hey, like, God, everything you do is bad. And I'm like, ah, oh, it is. I didn't try very hard. <laughs> so, but it's always super funny, because it's like, if I slight someone in any way, shape, or form, I immediately am guilty. Mm. Like, that's just a Catholic inbred mindset. Mm. It's like, every time I say something that's off-putting... I immediately feel like I have to apologize. And I'm like a pretty offensive human being just like in my own existence. And it's like, all right, cool. I, I, I will now feel bad for this for like the next 16 years of my life. And it's it's awful. Like, I, like I, I won't even lie. So there's several instances where something will pop into my head where I was like, I wronged someone in like the seventh grade. <laughs> And I am now, as a 32-year-old man, feel bad about it again. Mm. Like, I, I wasn't done being bad at myself about that. Let me rehash this. <laughs> I don't know. If you, if, have you ever... Uh, Kyle Kinane, he's a stand-up comedian. He's done some stuff for SNL and stuff like that. Mm. His, his stuff is gold. He's basically like a, a classy janitor when he's standing out there with a big old beard and shit. <laughs> but he's super funny. He's like, yeah, he's like, you know, you just feel guilty about shit. Like, he's got a whole stand-up about, like, how, like, uh, like you know, you deal with your family issues. You just drink and drink and push it down randomly. You just punch a picture of your family, and you're just, you're okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that sounds about right. Yeah, uh, that's kind of how I deal with my problems. That sounds functional. <laughs> yeah, like, you're spot on. Or he's just like, yeah, the other, thing, he did, the other piece of his stand-up is that he's like, yeah, sometimes, like, I just can't get through the day without feeling bad about stuff like oh uh, you know that time that you like crushed a frog with a rock that's what serial killers do and you're like why did you think about that i was six <laughs> like, oh, well but, shit watching that mindhunter show like i haven't watched it i've been told oh, that it would be super up my alley but i haven't gotten there they, just yet. they profile in serial killers and they say if you're mean to animals as a kid that's one of the signs that you're gonna be a serial killer yeah that's super i used to be mean to cats because <laughs> i don't like cats uh but I can't. I can't be mean to any animals now. I spent too much time working around animals as a, as a younger person. They're, they're just like, yeah. Do I get mad at my dog? Yeah, because he hates me. So that's, <laughs> and I equally hate him. But it's this mutual relationship that he is my wife's dog, and I'm like, all right, dude. Yeah. Like I legit when I take when I go for my run at four o'clock in the morning, I wake up, all three dogs go outside. Jack looks at me. He pees on something, and he goes, no, I'm not going with you. It is too cold. And he goes right back inside. I'm like, that's fine, man. Like, you're making a choice, but you can't bark at mom for the next hour while I'm gone. Like, right. that's not cool. Like, but, no, I, uh, yeah. Well, like, I, I understand that. Like, Dax out here. He's yeah. outside. Man, I can't, like, he fucking drives me crazy because he's so wound up. But I can't, like, picture, like, getting rid of him. No. Right? Like, you drive me fucking nuts. You have to stay outside because you literally will tear apart this house. And if I put you in a kennel, I'll, I'll show... I can't show it to you because yeah, it's up yeah. there. But he pulls that shit apart. I'll show you on bullets. <laughs> where he, like, like just metal made, yeah. with his mouth. He, like, ripped that shit. Like, you couldn't do this as a human being. You could not <laughs> replicate what he's done to his kennels. So, you have to stay outside. You can't be on a fucking chest call harness, like the one... Yeah, know, yeah. Because you fucking break them. <laughs> and you run he's around. Like, I am the man of this house. So, he's on a prong collar right now. Yeah. And he has to be outside, because if he's inside... Like, Courtney's kid was over here one day. Yeah. And he was getting too excited, because he's part fucking kangaroo, and he jumped up, and he flung the kid across the fucking room. <laughs> so, like, he's outside on a prong collar. He does have a heat lamp in his house. He's, yeah, yeah. He's... Well, I assume better, than, right. better than homeless people. Yeah, you're like, why do you get fed better than I do? This but is the when, worst. But when he comes inside, he'll be hyper till we go in the room, till, the, till his bedtime. He eats his food, he comes in the room, he sits on the floor, he waits, he knows as soon as I lay down, he jumps up in his cuddle time, and he's like the chillest dog ever. Yeah. <laughs> They all have their personalities, and they're all super weird. Like, he don't pray to God. <laughs> no, no. He, did, he clearly does not. If he's eating everything and trying to destroy cages, he's like, oh, man, if you send me to heaven, I'm going to tear them gates down, son. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tear this bitch apart. 
I, I do like that um, the youth, like if you look at studies, like people that believe in religion is going way down. I think, I think that's great. I, I personally feel, now I have friends that are religious and I don't judge them. You can believe whatever you want. Yeah. But I, sometimes I think like just by looking at like third world countries and shit, mm-hmm. it's a way to control the less educated in some ways. Yeah. Well, like it really, like it originally was used as this, like a colonization tool. Like I'm going to set up my mission and teach you Spanish or English. Mm-hmm. And now you're a part of our colony. And it's like, and then we're going to take you over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then we're going to mass slaughter you. And now you are our slaves. Right. But, um, <laughs> like no big deal. But you believe no, in God. <laughs> exactly. Thank God. You're going to go to heaven as when soon as I, I cut your head off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I worked you to the bone. I'm just going to end your life now. Um, no big deal. You served your purpose. That was a good round of cotton. Um, but <laughs> oh, it's, <geez. laughs> but it, I, it, it really is so like y- you can define it as human resources like that's a hundred percent of like where that could be going like you you don't gather wood like if you take it like in the most primitive sense like have you ever played settlers of Catan? no no a huge <laughs> nerd game but like basically it's like it's like aj empire kind of but it's a board game oh okay and no. it's ever changing it's super awesome we should play it sometime but um <laughs> uh, on the other side of it it's like you don't gather resources without a human component like you have to have something to get you to that point mm-hmm. and I, that's like if you boil things down that's a hundred percent of how every country has committed some kind of atrocity in the fact of trying to gain the most human resources to gather the most whatever resources mm-hmm. so you know Yes, we as a human race as a whole have done some horrifying things, but it's all in the essence of expansion. And I'm not saying that justifies it. I'm just more along the lines of like, that's just a fact. Like, what do you like? We can hate on every single race, country, whatever throughout time. We've all done something awful. Like, that's 100% of what's going on. And why nitpick? Like, right. can we? I feel like at some point, Things should equalize. I know they won't because we're human, but it, it, it would be ideal for everything to equalize where it's like, we all hate each other equally. Like, I feel like we're even getting to that point, like in this millennial situation where it's like, I'm not racist. I just don't tolerate people well. Yeah. Like that's a, like it's turned to that. Exactly. But there is still racism for sure. Oh yeah. Because there's people who still have a borderline understanding of the internet. Well, if you, if you think about it, I, oh shit. So if you think about it, there are two points to this. So if you yeah. think about it, um, I mean, the civil rights movement was l- l- like 60 years ago. Has it been 60 years? Yeah, because we're almost at 20. Yeah, yeah. It was I in the 60s. It has been. Yeah, no, that's crazy. Like, so like people are like, get over racism. Like, yeah, they were slaves. Well, uh, and motherfucker, that- your grandma was alive when <laughs> I couldn't even go to school with you. <laughs> yeah, what exactly. are you talking about? I just heard your, your grandmother drop the end, mom. What are you talking about? And then like, the other point, so I saw this video today on World Star of uh, Justin Bieber. Okay. Um, do you know his song "Want and Less Lonely Girl"? Maybe. I I, it, I hate very popular his existence. He, he was on camera singing this as a six, 15 or sixteen year old boy. Yeah. One less lonely in the world. Oh no. One less lonely in the world. You'll die when I'm in the Ku Klux Klan. One less in the world. Good. And Good. The com- I read the comments because you know that's where the entertainment is. Exactly. And they're like, like who doesn't love? Canadian I don't know why racism. this is shocking. Everybody that's ever played Modern Warfare Two knows this happens in the chat room, <laughs> <laughs> which is true and it's fucked up. No, I, I I completely understand that. I can very very vividly recognize myself playing Halo when it first came out for live, and you're like, yeah, dope. I'm going to drink Red Stripe. I'm going to use a terrible accent. I'm going to yell a bunch of twelve year olds. Yeah, <laughs> and that's that's exactly what happened. But it, like that kind of thing. Yes, is it pervasive in several other fashions? Yes, but I I, I don't know. It's it's one of those things where we're spending like I'm becoming desensitized as a person where yeah. I'm like I can't tolerate being offended all the time like I but in the day and age I know everyone's oh, like that's oh. another question keep going yeah. keep going I'm like that. everyone's offended about everything you can't say anything without pissing anyone off it's like oh I'm red or blue oh you're the other one so I'm pissed off I'm like you're left I'm right <laughs> yeah I'm like you know what I'm just right handed so <laughs> lefties get the fuck out no <laughs> <laughs> But I, I just, it's exhausting to the point where it's like, 
anytime I talk to like average people who clearly just don't give a shit, mm-hmm. they're like, I like I, I use the term I am a logical person. Yeah, that's how I like to define things. If I can understand things to a point, but I also uh, it's an old teaching methodology where it's. I live my life with an open hand. I'm happy to accept things as new information and gather them. I have an open opinion of existence. I need more information so I can make educated decision instead of coming at life with a closed fist saying, these are my opinions and I'm going to punch them down your throat. So let me jump in here. Yeah. Cause that's exactly where I was going back to the teaching thing. Yeah. So you said you need to be less sensitive, yeah. but the world we live in is more and more sensitive every day. I saw this thing where a college professor was saying most college professors are quitting or changing the way they teach entirely because of this call out culture that we live in and teachers are losing their job because of the way that they teach because it's offensive to some. What do you think about that? I think it's annoying. Like you're like, (laughs) it's because like, honestly, like, so the, the kind of teacher I used to be when I was teaching was abrasive and that is a loose term for basically bullying. Yeah. So, uh, (laughs) but it it was, it was who I was and it was what was effective. Like what I, what I needed to portray and who I was, was something that was like, all right, cool. This is who I am. I live my life out here because there is a culture in teaching where it's like as a, as a younger teacher, you're like, all right, cool. I'm not going to show my opinion. Mm-hmm. I was on the entirely other side of that. I'm like, this is my opinion, and I want you to understand it is an opinion. Mm-hmm. It is an adult opinion. I would hope you would believe it's an educated opinion, but it doesn't need to be yours. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to have one, you better have some shit to back it up and not be regurgitating daddy's backwood bullshit, you know, <laughs> red mentality kind of garbage, or even being on the other side where it's like, we need to save the earth, and this is why. It's like, well... Your why is because your mom said so, Mm -hmm. and I don't give a shit about that. Mm -hmm. So you need to have an opinion. And I I did lay into a couple students because they'd be like, well, this is the way the world is. I'm like, how long have you been alive? (laughs) Shut the fuck up. Like, you don't even know what the internet is. Like, we've been doing all this homework, and you haven't read a damn article. So shut up. And so I I was totally forthright about that. I'm like, this is what my opinion is. But these days, you'd been canned. Oh, yeah. In a heartbeat, I probably would have been... hard and feathered in did like you the think bum- you did you think you were a good teacher e- <sighs> yes okay and i i think it had nothing to do with teaching i think it had everything to do with the fact that i cared about my students okay. like their success was important to me and that was more like I was more than happy to teach what they needed to know to meet school standards and state standards, but I felt it was wildly important to watch them be successful, period, as a person. Now, I, I, I dig that. That's dope. You don't see that in colleges. At least... No. I mean, I went to a community college, now I go to online college. Yeah. I don't have any... Now in the online college, I have no interaction with my teachers. Zero. Yeah. They post what you're supposed to do, I do it, I don't ask questions, I'm going to send them emails... Nothing. So, and there's, this is where the juxtaposition is. So The what? The uh, the other side of things. Okay. So, um, <laughs> the, so I, I went to private, uh, a private four-year college after being in community college for two and a half years. So mm-hmm. do the math. Mm-hmm. I've been in school for a long time. Um, <laughs> and didn't get, get, get anything besides a piece of paper out of it. But, and debt. Um, so. That's the most important. But, so the difference there is, is the fact that, so like, I was a brand new student at, at my college community or are you talking private now we're talking private okay. so i'd already basically flunked out of community college even though that's not really a possibility i just kind of stopped going <laughs> right like, i was like well this is boring i'm already bombing i might as well get out of here mm-hmm. so and, and then i ended up at this four-year college and which was awesome because within the first semester a uh, one of my own professors was like what are you doing and i'm like oh, i'm doing outdoor education like i'm in a backpack for the rest of my life and i already had like pretty bad knees and I was like starting to hurt pretty bad and she was like what about teaching like and and legit like was like this would be up your alley and I'm like you've known me for like two months how the fuck what do you know Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and when I brought it up to other people they're like oh no that that's a hundred percent of what you should do and it didn't even stop there like she ended up being my teacher for almost all four years at that school and then I, I dropped out several times because of a difference of opinion um, <laughs> and I had one of my teachers who I was got, I got very verbal with her. So, which I was like, I don't believe this way she would do things. I'm not coming to this class anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm done. And I'm dropping out. 
and I did and I left and she came back she so I was working at the school I ended up becoming a teacher at as like a secretary slash you know errand boy and she came to that school and was like I think you should come back the teacher had a difference with yeah she okay. came back and was like you care too much to not finish this out and not see this out so she came back and I, I like I was mad at her because she showed up at my workplace and I'm like mm -hmm. mm, get the hell out of my fucking face mm -hmm. I'm trying to do my job over here and I already don't like you mm -hmm. and but she made a couple pitches and she was like you're gonna be great you just we just need you to finish and and that was the track that I was on I would like I was going to be a great teacher I cared I was huge in that community it was everything that that it was me mm -hmm. and then like but that's what I was paying for, was for them to care about me actually graduating. They cared about the direction I was going in. They cared about how I was developing as a human. But that's what I'm, that was what I was paying for. And I don't know if it's worth like the endless amount of debt and you know, <laughs> crippling pain that goes along with that. But it, it was that I feel like you're paying for that. But that's a very small, like I went to a, God, Presky College, what, had like 400 kids in the undergraduate program, so it's not big. None of my teacher classes went over like 25 students. Mm. Like, most of them were 10 or less, and... I think that's what it is in my online school. I think they do 25 students to a class. Yeah. I, I, I can't speak to it, but that's yeah. like 100% of like what I experienced was, these teachers care about me graduating. They see Was potential. it the same at community college? No, because I was barely there. I'm, I literally went from living like 20 minute drive from the school and then I moved to Santa Cruz and it turned into an hour and a half commute and Ugh. I stopped going. I didn't even know. So I, I randomly signed up for summer classes and forgot. And uh, I did not remember. It's that you did. Yeah, yeah, damn it. So, but it was, I totally forgot. And I failed all of those classes because I had forgotten I was in school. Like that's, that's how bad that it was. was. A DMT trip. Exactly. I'm like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> and like, a, like, and it was back when the school had a policy where it's like, if you don't show up, we just fail you. Mm -hmm. Because they also had like a ton of like um, international students who would show up and just try to take the year vacation of being a student. Yeah. But if you bomb, they send you back. Yeah. So like, they were like, all these teachers like had this hard firm stance where it's like, I took a G uh, no, what was it? An oceanography course. So if you understand how much I didn't care about my education when I was in community college, um, I took oceanography, <laughs> and the teacher was like super clear. It's like if you stop showing up, I will flunk you, and I will keep you enrolled in this class. Yeah. Until they deport you, and I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, oh snap, dude, this guy's crazy. Like this is intense. I don't even care about the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> like why am I in here? But uh, that that was like the mentality. Like like he. He wanted you to be there to learn, but he yeah. also was like, I'm not going to fuck around. Like, right. And I get Don't that. waste his time. Yeah, exactly. But his, like, how valuable is his time in reality when you're teaching, like, 300 kids in a, like, yeah. a lecture hall setting? And I had a bunch of those. My math class, which I bombed twice before I finally figured out that you have to go to class. <laughs> uh, like, it was, it was awful because it was like, oh, God, I don't care. You don't care. Like, why am I here? Like, I hate math. Like... And equally, I failed the entrance thing to, like, gauge, like, how smart you are. Yeah, yeah I, I, I basically spent the entire summer, like, just fucking around and then finally took it and bombed everything. And I couldn't even remember how to turn on my TI-89. I got in there. I was like, what? I don't think you what can. What did you just say to me? The TI-89, it's like the okay. giant graphing calculator that uh, I, like, for <laughs> high school, we had to have this thing. And so it's like this monster computer that, like, is handheld. And the only thing I knew how to do was put games on it and spell boobs. So that was, <laughs> that was basically it. It was basically a really shitty Game Boy. So, <laughs> and I'm like looking, and I'm, I remember being in there, like taking this test and looking at, like, literally the stereotypical Asian kid is sitting next to me, and I'm I'm looking at this kid, and I'm like, he already turned on his computer, on his uh, his calculator. I I can't do this. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I, I think I got through half of that test. And it just popped into my head like, oh shit, this is how I turn on my my little uh, my little calculator. Get that thing turned on. I'm like, I'm still gonna bomb this fucking test. I'm gonna be in remedial math for the rest of my goddamn life. Nothing wrong with it. And there were so many things wrong with it because I had, I had already taken algebra too. So I was like, oh, damn. I'm real screwed. I'm gonna be doing this same shit. I'm gonna be doing fractions again. This shit is just garbage. Isn't that what's crazy about life? So not to not to downplay anything that you've done. No, you graduated college. Yes, degree. Yes. We're in the same exact spot. This is truth. <laughs> but that's life. I, I, I have not. 
That's that's what's crazy about life. No, no, and I like there's like that that is what it is. Like that's what the whole flexibility thing. Like you can't get like you just you have to do other things to make that move. Like you you can't have this like single track yeah. college graduation thing. Like it almost like shouldn't even be separated anymore. It like almost should be like this streamlined just like job training for the rest of your existence. Well, you don't even like you don't need college anymore. You can literally go on YouTube and look up anything. I know. Anything. What do you want to build tomorrow, TJ? We can find it on YouTube, I guarantee it. I know, but I don't want to build shit. Like, I, <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm saying, <laughs> no, like, I'm just fucking you, you don't need to go to fucking four years of college to learn how to no, be a doctor. Exactly. When I'm sure you can do a fucking brain surgery, it's on YouTube. Well, that's the thing that I see, <laughs> like, on Reddit and stuff like that, where you're like, oh, like, you know, like, this program just came out, but the job description says you need three years of experience using it, but it's been only on the market for six months. Right. And you're like, what the fuck, man? Like, I can't. Like, So I needed to be a coder that made it to get the job. Yeah, <laughs> my bad. I didn't create this program. Let me go back and refigure out how the fuck the world works. Right. And, and, but that kind of shit's stupid because you... you yeah. that's, a, that's that old uh, saying. You don't need a degree to start a business, but to work for it. You sure do. <laughs> yeah, God. I, switched, uh, I actually switched my major today. Um, I was in sports management. Yeah. I switched over to HR today because it's broader. Yeah. More opportunity, I feel. Exactly. What the fuck can you do with a sports management degree? I, I don't know, Gino. Exactly. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I said, fuck it. Let I, me, I'm sorry. <laughs> if I'm going to do it, because I'm doing it, right? Like, yeah, yeah. No matter what, I'm finishing this shit. Let me at least do something where, if I want to, I can leave our company. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and it's not only that, but it's like it's funny because like, you have to realize like even my dad actually go went through this. So he's he's an engineer, worked for a bunch of companies, but he's getting older. Mm -hmm. And when he finally his company, like the company he was working for, fired him because he was crotchety. I think is what how he describes that to me in some way, shape, or form. But he still can work, and he wants to. But he's at that like he has had to create two resumes: one that shows him being like a manual laborer, like kind of like he worked in like a, a subsidiary of Lowe's, um, and like doing all that kind of stuff. He knows a ton about tools, so he had to create that one that shows him as basically like a day laborer, mm -hmm. if, if I can like without insulting him, to get <laughs> other jobs because he, he's overqualified for others. Oh yeah, yeah. he's super overqualified. Because he's like, oh, yeah, like, I have this degree. I've had all of this experience in engineering. I've done all of this stuff. But I just want a job. Yeah. And I had to do the same thing. Like, so when I, like, so I was a security guard for all of two months before, you know, I wanted to, like, kill myself. Because this shit is <laughs> boring and I have ADD. And sitting there, like, I literally, there was a day where I read something like six books. And I'm not like talking like tiny. Like I Jesus read six Christ. books because I'm sitting there and I'm like, holy shit, I'm working a 13 hour shift and all I want to do is die. Like this is awful. And I, I only lasted long and they were like, you lasted longer than we thought when you quit. And I was like, this job blows. Like <laughs> yeah. this sucks. Like everything about this sucks. But um, I had to totally destroy my own resume because as a teacher with a degree, I was overqualified for literally everything. To be a security guard, yeah. Well, and I just needed a job. Like, Isn't we, that crazy that you can be overqualified for a job? You're, you want entry level. But, I'm coming to you with more experience at entry level, but you're not going to hire me? I literally, Why the fuck not? I know. I literally went into job interviews and I'm like, I understand what you're telling me, that I'm overqualified. I just want a goddamn paycheck. Yeah. I'm going to work myself to death. Yeah. I just need a fucking paycheck. Yeah. And, and that's not enough. Like, the fact that I am willing to work. And it's, that's what's funny. So, like, when my my dad works right now uh, shipping, like, large, I think they're MRI machines or CT machines. Oh, like, so shit. he ships those. <laughs> and so he's shipping those. And so after he got hired, he, they were, like, talking to him about how upper mobility works. And he's like, well, here's my actual resume. So he had handed them the resume with all of his engineering yeah. shit. And they're like, we'll have to figure out something for you. Because really? they're like, shit. Like, the he U.O. knows all this shit. Yeah, well, and it was funny. So he was working for Orchard Supply, which is owned by Lowe's. They shut down a bunch of the stores in California. No mm -hmm. big deal, whatever. It's basic Lowe's bullshit. Yeah, they just bought it to get rid of it. Exactly. <laughs> they needed the property, mm -hmm. more or less. So when they shut that, so when the, every time they're, like, giving my dad a raise while he was working there, he's like, I don't give a shit about this. Like, any time where someone else comes with me in my field offering me a job... I'm going to quit this. Mm -hmm. But I like he did get offered a handful of jobs, but he's like, the commute's like an hour and a half every single day in one direction. Mm -hmm. and that 
diminishes the amount of money I'm going to make because I'm just spending like half my day driving. Right, that work happy balance. Exactly, shit, exactly. Balance, yeah. So he stayed in that job for quite some time until they closed it down. But mm -hmm. he was just like, why are you... I, unless you're going to make me a lead in one of these departments, right. this raise make means... It, make it worth his time. Yeah, he's like, this raise is worth nothing to me. Like, it, it's not a big deal. Like, save it all up and give me a $5 raise in six years. <laughs> and it's just like... But it, it, he had to dumb himself down to get a job that just... Like, he just wants to work. Like, he's, like, not... He's, like, I don't want to retire. Like, I'm not... You know, I'm doing the X, Y, Z. Like, I just need health insurance. Like, this is it. Sad, though, right? Not really, because, like, my dad would have stayed at Orchard Supply for but it, forever. But it's sad that it comes to that. Well... You gotta dumb yourself down to work. Oh, yeah. No, without question. Like, the second job that I had here in Coeur d'Alene and then moved to the Spokane office was medical equipment. Mm -hmm. And I thankfully didn't have to dumb myself down because my father-in-law pulled some strings and was like... My son-in-law is probably just going to die of boredom, so we need to find him something else to do. And so I, I got into that, but like I, I probably would have died of boredom. Like I was so bored, yeah. like a hundred percent of the time. But I really had to like turn my brain off. I didn't even get to do customer service. They're like, don't talk to anyone, just stare at the screens. And I'm like, you want to know how fast I can move from thirteen screens? I can totally shift my eyes like at like milliseconds. And it's like this is how bored I am. And when I go through and it, like. Oh, God, it was just so awful. And like, but you, you're just stupid. Like that's that's what it is. You're just dumb. Yeah. And what's even more dumb is that they had people watching the screens, in some weird office in India, and I'm sitting there <laughs> being like, why the fuck am I here? Like, this doesn't even make, make any goddamn sense. Like, and they also had a no heroes clause in our in our contract saying if you got shot doing something outside of just getting people outside or anything along those lines, if you try to be a hero you're immediately fired and they hold no liability. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> so basically I'm a Walmart greeter with yeah. a badge and no gun. Yeah. So this is dope. <laughs> I hate this. But now, how do you not get bored at our job? I get bored. I'm bored all the fucking time at our job. Thank God for YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I, I can, because I find other ways to challenge myself. Like I do love the medical side of things. Like I know codes, I know pricing, I know I know how to read medical records like the back of my hand. Like I missed. Like it's funny. Like people are like, oh look, it took me seven hours to read this demand. I'm like, it literally took me an hour to do the demand and write the evaluation. Oh, me too. I don't know all that shit, but I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> but I've been, I've gotten it all and I've done that. But it's finding challenges in different ways and like our new role is interesting and so it, it has created new <laughs> challenges for me and where like like i am learning more but i'm, I'm having to i'm but i am getting to the point where i'm forcing myself to do things differently yeah to see how i can push things yeah but it but that's a self thing it has nothing to do with the job i would do that anywhere right like i did it at, when i was delivering medical equipment it was like how many deliveries can i do in a day how far can I push my body mm -hmm. before I break? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do that anywhere. It was like the same thing with teaching. It was like, all right, cool. How many hours can I work in a week? Really? How many papers can I really grade in the two hours that I gave myself before I'm going to get to this class and deliver these to these kids and realize that all of these essays are crap. So it's, <laughs> it, it just, so you're self-motivated questionable. I'm, it sounds like, cause you're looking for, you're looking to push yourself. Yeah. But it's more out of boredom. Right. Than, but that's where it comes from. That's where self-motivation comes from. Yeah, but I get really bored <laughs> out of that as well. Right. Where it's just like, I, I did this, I tried, <laughs> I was successful in some capacity, and now I'm done. Let me ask you this. Where do you see yourself in five years, career-wise? Still still where we're at? Yeah. Same role? So or same company? Same company? We'll see what happens. Mm. I, I do like, yeah, but you also have to understand my circumstances are very different in the fashion that True. I do have a family. Yeah. I do have a wife with a chronic illness. I need this health care. I yeah. need this paycheck and it's good. Like, yeah, it's not bad at all. <laughs> no, I'm not, not going to find anything else. Like right. that's really not, not there's, there's no, nothing that's going to pay this amount. And I know that if my wife even ever listens to this, she's like, your happiness is important to us. Like you need to be a happy person. I'm like, but I also need to get paid. You gotta support like, your family. Like, the family comes first. Like, my yeah. happiness is in the woods. And I will find that with this job because it gives me plenty of time off. But See, and I'm in a different boat. I don't have that, right? Yeah. I don't leave it because I'm not gonna get this money nowhere else. The same amount, right? Yeah. Until I finish this degree. Yeah. No, I, I totally understand I'm that. Fucked. Like, like, it's great. Like, I've never, in my whole life, I never thought I would make this much money. Ever. Like, when I was, like, 
16, I worked my first job. Minimum wage here was seven twenty five. I was like, if I ever make $12 an hour, I'm going to be the shit. Exactly. No, I totally understand that. So I actually, I had a, my principal, she was really funny. So like when she hired me as the school secretary, she was like, I'm offering, I think she offered me like $17,000 of my salary. So, and, and which is insane, but it, like, <laughs> but I was like, okay, dope. That's awesome. And she was like, no, you, you got to negotiate with me. And I'm like, what? I don't even understand what you're telling me right now. Like I was God, back then I was like 21 yeah. and I still was like not making money. Yeah. And she was like, yeah, like I'm going to pay you this. And I, no, I was a halftime secretary. So that's, that wasn't, so yeah, that makes way more sense now. So uh, <laughs> I was like trying to go back. I'm like time traveling. Um, no, <laughs> but she offered me like $17,000. She was like, you're worth more than that. You just have to talk to me to get it out of me. And I'm like, I don't. You didn't do it because you're young. No, I did. She ended up paying me eighteen thousand okay. dollars or something like that. But it was because she had to prompt me, and I was like, "How much do I ask for? Like, I don't even know. Like, what is the dollar worth? Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Like, where do I buy pot? Like, let, I don't know." <laughs> let me ask you this: When you so you recently were promoted? Yeah. Did you negotiate the salary? No. Why not? Our whole job is negotiation, DJ. I know. It's it's more along the lines of I never saw it happening. I didn't and I didn't expect it to actually mm. happen. Like that was not like in our role, I consider myself to be rather dangerous. I'm not a huge rule follower. Like reckless. No, I wouldn't say reckless. I get the job done. Yeah. I get results yeah. and that's all. Like I, I'm not exactly like, it's funny, like with, with our, our mentees and stuff like that, like even, even some of the mentees are like, so it's, Oh, we're going to get the rules from these people. But when I want to seal the deal, I'm going to come to you. Yeah. And I like I, that has been, that has happened to me where it's like, I talked to someone about how doing this, but how would you do it? And I'm like, we're shifting more shady. What? The company as a whole, I feel, is getting more shady. I we, won't, say, we won't say who the company is. I'm not even saying more shady. It's it's almost an efficiency piece. Like, it's like, I really do. I think it's, like, me as a consumer, I don't want to be bothered. I know how the system works. If I don't know how the system works, I should be asking questions. Mm -hmm. I feel like I, like the majority of companies are shying away from caution labels and going more towards you should know how to work this by now and that's in our industry but i wouldn't say everywhere right like what fucking bud light just finally put the fucking ingredients on their goddamn bus. i don't want to know what the fuck is in bud light that's <laughs> if i wanted to drink water tainted by horse urine i would go ahead and do that and that is a slight against bud light i have read the biography of the company and i, I wasn't happy about any of it but <laughs> it was interesting because that family is riddled with garbage i know nothing about Bud Light, but I, i'm just saying like i because everything that was more cautious no and so I, so i get what you're saying for for what our industry is doing right because I'm you saying, don't know I'm how not, to ride this bike shouldn't have bought the motherfucker but no that's, but, but in other industries it's like oh you need training wheels so i no, i yeah no i totally understand that but in terms of the bud light thing that's more of a consumerism thing because millennials are way more self-conscious about what's going on and like it's not even exactly. millennials it's everyone is becoming more self-conscious exactly. about what they're putting into their existence, which is fine. What's going on in their life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They want to be more inclusive instead of being more consumeristic. They want to be a conscious consumer, which right. is a good thing. It is. But um, in terms of like that cautiousness actually going away, because people, people are more so happy these days in terms of each other. Like, not yeah. in terms of companies. Because like, they don't care about each other. Well, and the, the companies are so large now. It's like, oh, you want to sue me? Sweet. How do you feel about being in court for the next twenty five years? Yeah. Your kids are gonna hear about I'm this gonna suit. Make you go broke. Trying exactly. To sue me. I'm gonna break you. That's a hundred percent of what's going on. But I also feel like a lot of those products are also just like, like if you think about smart homes and stuff like that, it's they don't come with a ton of instructions. They come with, you should know how to do this. Yeah. Like you should be able to touch this button and talk to things. You but there's still the warranties. Let's be serious. Who the fuck is reading that shit? Like, nobody's reading that shit. But they're using them. Something breaks, you're using it. They, yes. they still have that peace of mind, right? Yeah, but that's not like a warning label. That's just sure a guarantee. I'm sure the fucking realtor, when they're like, oh, we're going to build this brand new smart home. Do you want this or this and this? And they're like, oh, well, what's the difference? So they're getting some instruction. Yeah, well, to a certain extent, but there's some implied intuition. Yeah. And, and that's also like, 
with Apple's like whole take over the market. I know there's other companies that were doing things along these lines, but it's like just creating products that are intuitive that don't require a caution. It's the caution is you just gave all your personal information to a capitalistic corporate giant. What the fuck do you think they were going to do with your personal information yeah. stored away in a Donald Duck vault? No, fucker. They're going to sell that shit all over the place. Like, of course, don't be stupid. Yeah. Like, but it's, it's those kind of things that don't like, Oh yeah, I'm going to share my cookies on this website that I randomly went on to. Yeah, no shit. They're going to sell all of your fucking information. Oh, yeah. Like, don't be stupid. Like, you know this is happening. And if you're going to be cautious now, like, it's like, oh, like, like us as 30-year-olds. It's like, oh, I'm going to be cautious now. Like, no, fucker. Like, your whole life is on the internet already. Like, you oh, already yeah. shot the shit the bed. And it's like the same thing that's <laughs> happening to kids these days. It's like, oh, I posted myself doing horrible things on the internet. And yeah, it's going to fucking come back to bite you in oh, the yeah. ass. Or, like, my favorite thing, so... Like fucking James Gunn. <laughs> but yeah no it's it's all that kinds of shit like it's coming back to haunt you and I, I don't i don't think a lot of that is validated i think that's stupid in a lot of ways where it's like shame on you for doing this like 40 years ago i'm like you want to know what i was doing 40 fucking years ago oh well first off i wasn't born <laughs> yeah but like uh, 20 Your parents years were fucking for you yeah it was like <laughs> oh, what were you doing like like you know like I'm at, like even now it's like oh what were you doing 10 years ago i'm like being awful like yeah. and like being like dumb. let's be serious like people between the ages of like yeah god let's let's broaden the spectrum here like 12 and 21 are basically just animals i like, would say 12 to 26 <laughs> i was getting better no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you're you're like in this spectrum of like you're just an instinctual brain just like trying to get wasted and hook up with anything with an orifice yeah. and that's like that's that's 100 percent what's going on there so like why are we holding that against people that doesn't make sense to me it's like okay cool you use the n-word when it was still accepted acceptable back in the day why am i punishing you for that that was back in the day like i'm not trying to say it's good in know, any way shape or form but i'm like <laughs> he clearly is a different person now yeah like that's if we don't allow people to evolve then should we what go we hate doing? on yeah i'm like should we go hate on some fucking monkeys like they're clearly going to be racists like that's what's going <laughs> to happen like they're going to evolve they're going to be awful yeah. so but i'm, I'm like I, I don't understand punishing people like there's got to be like some media statute of limitations here. There should be. I I'll I'll get on board with that. I've never I've never thought of that, but there should be a a, a statute of limitations for what you've said. Yeah, it's like, like the R, like even the R Kelly thing, right? Like yeah, he fuck kids. It's, uh, no, let's not go that cuz Yeah, I'm like kids. no, no, if you're fucking no, kids like I want to put you like, away for forever. But like even like dealing drugs, right? Yeah. There's a statute of limitations. Like, I can tell you right now, when I was 16 years old, I sold a lot of crack, TJ. A shit ton of crack. And I can say that right now, and I can't get in trouble for it. Yeah. But if you, like, so the F word yeah. towards the homo... Oh, yes. I understand. My memories pop up on Facebook. I delete that shit. Because I used to use that word. Yeah. Not to be derogatory towards gays. But you were using it. That, that... Can't do it no more? No, and I totally understand that. And that's like, I just... I was listening to old Eminem songs oh. <laughs> on my Spotify, mm -hmm. and it's like, holy shit, if this came out today... Oh my god, there'd be riots in the street, yeah. Eminem would have been crucified. No, and that's that's the difference. See, we can't, we can't keep going back. We can't hold... And he's still idolized today. Well, so it, yeah. it's pick and choose. I just, oh, uh, I just don't understand it. Like, it's just like a waste. Like, you're like... People, like it's like okay cool like you know we're gonna see our are the next generation the one that's good that the, the kids i'm raising now they're gonna be punished for the shit that they did and it's like oh man look at this video like you stepped on an anthill or set oh, it on yeah, fire especially today's uh, age yeah, yeah that kid is like <laughs> going uh mine hunter or whatever that kid's clearly a serial killer but he grows up to be this awesome teacher yeah. or like the doctor or some shit or some you know a nazi scientist um <laughs> <laughs> <Right enough. laughs> exactly hey but he's doing great things um um, and, and, and they're going to be punished for that. They're going to yeah. be removed from positions of extreme influence just based on the fact that, you know, one time you said something real stupid or you did something oh, real all, dumb. Yeah, I'm with you. We all say stupid shit. But it's like how, how to anger emotion. So, like, I don't, I don't let emotion control me at all. I never really have. Yeah. But a lot of people can't do that. And that's and I, you will say some shit. Exactly. And they're, <laughs> yeah, you get fired up. Like, I totally understand that. Like, I, like, I am an emotional person. Like, I get, I, I'm on all aspects of that. I get real frustrated. I get real sad. Like, there's, like, everything there for me. Like, mm -hmm. I, 
but you you can't hold that against me for forever. That's not okay. Like yeah, did it, like should do it sometimes. Do you an own, own apology? Yeah, you do. Yeah, but. You can't hold it against me that I, like, yeah, like, I'm admitting that kind of thing, like, it's like, all right, cool, yeah, did a long, like, when, when I was in college, did I set a railroad track on fire? Yeah, but I knew it was going to get put out, <laughs> but I really wanted to reenact Back to the Future. That was, like, fucking dope. It was, like, a quarter mile worth of railroad track that we burnt, and it did no damage, but it took a lot of napalm. That, that was a lot of work, and that was science. I was learning. And then I learned that fire departments are not equipped to deal with that. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> no, no, they had to stay out there for like eight hours and watch the ship burn. I shut down like two roads. It was bad uh, call. They didn't know it was either. They they didn't okay. decide to pin it on me. Okay. That's that's basically what it boiled down to. <laughs> I did get to watch from the third story of my house, there and just go. it's me and my buddy sitting on top. My privilege. Being, <laughs> just knowing the neighborhood and where I could run. The, the internet's gonna hate you for your white privilege, DJ. Yeah, damn it. I'm part Pacific Islander. Um, <laughs> don't hate me entirely. Oh, but no, it, it, you can't. You can't slight me for that. That's not true. That shit's forever ago. Right, you're a kid. Yeah. And it was awesome. That's that call out. That that, that came full circle back to that call out culture. I think it's the same thing, man. No, you gotta I, let I, teachers teach how they're gonna teach. Yeah, you gotta let people say what the fuck they're gonna say. Isn't that what this country was part based on is freedom of speech? Well, and that's what's super funny. So, like, even taking it back to the school thing. So, like, I would drop the F-bomb continually in the classroom. It was just kind of like, I, I don't, I can't self-regulate in that fashion. I'm very brash, and that's who I was. But the another teacher in that same school accidentally said shit. In front now, of when them. you say F bomb, you're talking about fuck, right? Yes. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, we no. Oh, about. God, no. <laughs> Especially with a very large uh, homosexual community at that school. Okay. But um, <laughs> no, no, that would have not gone over well. But but then another teacher drops, says shit. Mm -hmm. And he has to go in from the school board and do all this stuff. I don't even get reprimanded. Like, nothing happens to me because that's the precedent that I set is this is who I am. If you don't like it, you're probably going to fail my class. <laughs> and it's not because you suck. It's because you actually don't know how to read. So yeah. that's, and that's fine. That's on you. But he, <laughs> he does that. And it's like, I'm like, I don't understand. Like, or I see other teachers who are like, they have to pussyfoot around their classroom because they have to do X, Y, Z. And I'm like, I don't like any of you. Like that's, I, the, that's the president. And it's like, and this is the kind of funny thing. It was explained to me after I quit teaching was, you said to everyone that you just don't like them, but we knew that you loved us because you go up and above. Like, you do things. Like, once you knew, like, once you got, uh, a kid got in with you, you would take care of them 100%. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm going to make sure you're fed. I'm going to make sure you get home at night. You can call me if something bad happens. You know, it's like, uh, like I, I did put it out there like my own parents. I'm like, you know what? If you get drunk at a party, you call me. I will pick you up and take you home. But that's as far as I'm going to go, and I'm not going to lie for you. Yeah. But I will get you there. And that's it. Because I know how this goes. <laughs> so <laughs> that's that's what's going to happen. And But you can call me. So you can get your shit together while we drive to your parents' house. No one ever took a, me up on it. Thank fucking God. But, that would have been awkward. <laughs> well, dude, Why are you I, picking up my kid from a party, yeah. you fucking he called me file? yeah he called me <laughs> he said yeah no that well fuck so i basically so i i basically adopted an 18 year old girl when i was still a secretary because she was getting kicked out of her group home because mm -hmm. she was aging out mm -hmm. she had nowhere else to go and no family and so the school was like what are we gonna do i'm like i have a spare bed she can stay with me i'll make sure she's fed i'll make sure she gets to school and that went sideways. There is like a very... <laughs> I bet it well, did. No, it, it went sideways in a very different way. Is I was not equipped as an adult to deal with this other adult. Like, I didn't know what to do for her. I didn't know... I couldn't even take care of myself. Mm -hmm. Like, that was like how bad it was, was I thought I was doing something great. Like, I was like, this girl's so smart. She's creative. I can, I can do this. Like, I can be a parent in some way, shape, or form. I literally, my subconscious has crushed that memory into something where I don't remember how long she lived with me. <laughs> and like, it's, it's, it's probably it, two days. <laughs> no, it, it, it was so long. And so it was, it was awful because it, it basically killed me. Like I was spending so much time trying to take care of her Yeah. and like, she was huge into drugs and it was like really hard for me to like understand what she's going through. Like, I, like I've never been in a group home. I've never 
not had a huge support structure. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I thought just doing good was going to be enough and it wasn't. And like, she ended up getting arrested and like so many horrible things. And like, it just broke me as a person that I can't remember it all. Like I can remember like huge portions that were like very traumatizing, but the overarching heart wrenching experience of it, I can't remember at all. And I had a terrible girlfriend back then that made me even fucking worse. And I was just like, I can't manage my own existence. And it's like funny because it's like, I spent so much time studying psychology and trying to study people and understand them to only have it, have my own brain shut out this memory because it was too hard. Can't learn everything in a book. <laughs> well, I knew this. I knew that was a possibility. I just didn't know what was going to happen to me. Right. And and that was what was like hugely humanizing for me because it was like I thought I was like this god of things. Like I'm like ah, oh, I, I know so that much. Young cockiness. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like ah, oh, you know, I'm going to be a great teacher. And then it was like, holy shit, your backstory is like longer than the Bible. Like this is shit is out of control. I don't understand. Like this what, book is real. Yeah. I'm like holy <laughs> shit, this shit is stained. Um, and I like I just didn't know what I was doing, and it was awful. But I, it was a very huge experience to like I don't reflect on it very often because like i i know my brain is shutting out something awful like yeah. i know like i remember spending an entire night with her just being awake and i like i didn't understand why she was awake i knew she was on drugs but i couldn't figure out why we were fucking awake for so long and i had to go teach the next day at a different school that i didn't work at and it was the first time i was going to teach there and i'm like i gotta make a good impression like it's my little like internship thing mm -hmm. and i fucked that up like really bad because I was sleep deprived. And what was even worse is my school that I worked at kept calling me. The police department was calling me and I was getting phone calls in the classroom from the school that I was teaching at right then. Wow. Because the girl went to a fourth school and, or to a, a third school and tried to enroll while she was high on drugs and got arrested nice. for basically vagrancy slash refusing to leave a premises. And they kept calling to call me because I'm the only person that was listed as contact. Any, yeah. 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 Like I'm not a guardian. I'm, I'm not, I didn't adopt her. I was just taking care of the girl for however long. And I was like, holy shit. And by the time I finally got a hold of people, she had already, she was gone. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, I don't, what do I do with all her shit? <laughs> well, at least you're prepared now for when your girls turn 18. <laughs> Holy shit. If they put me through that, I swear to God. It's like I lost all my hair teaching, and now my beard is going to go white because my own kids. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm not super worried. My oldest can throw a punch, but we'll see what happens with the younger one. It's inevitable for your, your beard to go white, TJ. Ah, oh, dude, I can't wait. Just be old and wise. Just the and knowledge. Oh, no, it's not even that. It's like, hey, I need my looks to match how generally disgruntled I am. And I'm just not there yet. I, I look too jovial. It's like, hey, look at your lumber sexual attitude. I'm like, I'm actually pretty pissed off like 90% of the time, but I look too good. So we'll, we'll tone that down. That's awesome. Don't. Yeah, no, it's just, it is what it is. But yeah. Ugh. So much trauma. Yeah. Dang. That's a good... Man, you got a good story, man. Yeah, I wish... Sometimes I wish I had a better story. <laughs> a happier nah. ending. No, nah, that makes you who you are today. Yeah, that, that is very true. And that person is crushed into a small ball into my instinctual brain so I can never remember it. Hey, it's all right, though. It's it's a, it's part of learning, right? Okay, exactly. It's part of growing up. Got to realize You're going to take chances. Mm -hmm. Not all of them are going to work out. 22-year-old <laughs> cannot be a rehab person. Like, that, you cannot rehab an 18-year-old. They think they can. <laughs> yeah, they think a lot of things. Yeah. God. Dope. All right, man. Well, we're uh, coming up on a long time here, so we'll have you back another time if you're down. And Always. Thanks for coming, man. Hey, it's a pleasure. All right.